everyone. Good morning, good morning. It is Tuesday. And it's early. It's... This is the early... No. No, I've streamed this early. When I did the original V0, when we did the uh, the one-day build, I started at 10 a.m., I think, so... Yeah. A little bit of a blizzard here today. I think uh, we're getting it Wednesday. Tomorrow morning, I think, is when the uh, we're supposed to get that blizzard that's kind of moving across right now. So, yeah. So, how y'all doing today? We're going to carry on with part two of the uh, Lector.com build. If you want any information about this build, if you want to get one of these kits yourself, link in the description. Uh, this kit was provided by Lector. Uh, it's basically a V0 kit. It's got a bunch of LDO components, along with a bunch of extras, making a little... Uh, a little bit of a, a pro kit comes with some extras um we kit just for reference does come with a kirigami bed mod uh mine did not because it's a pre-production one but if you purchase the kit it comes with one of those so yeah uh like the serial video of we printing a rat rig yes so that's still printing rat rig parts um how much time we got left 74 percent done i'm not running it at balls to the wall speed because uh I normally actually don't run my printers that fast when I'm printing, like, printer parts on it. Because, like, you're going to see the parts. I want them to look good. So I slow it down a little bit. Plus, this is print number four or five on the printer. And it's a 24-hour uh, a parts print. So not going to not gonna send it all out. There's a stream element bot. There you go. I mean, hopefully that will help me with uh, some of the spam. So yeah, so we're going to carry on with the build today. Um, where we left off was we got our AB motor mounts install the frame together. Uh, we're probably going to stream maybe about four hours today until I get hungry. Uh, but yeah, no scotch, no scotch. I just got up. Woke up, drove the little guy to daycare, and now I'm here. Too bad it's not in stock. Um... It's not in stock. They're waiting on, uh, I think it's one. They're waiting on a component to come in before they can. They're not going to put it up until everything's in. But they, uh, global shipping is a complete mess right now. And they're waiting on one component to come in, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Watching at work. It should be working. So, uh, no housekeeping today. We're just going to get right into the build. A uh, little thing of note, there should be a stream Friday. Uh, we're going to put together the Comgrow CNC early afternoon. Uh, follow me on the Twitters at 3DP Nero uh, to do that for notifications. So where were we at? Where were we at? Uh, we put in our AB motor mounts and now we're on to AB idlers. So let's get those out. So again, for those uh, unfamiliar, this kit, if you missed last week, this kit comes with all the printed parts. Um, they're available from to purchase from Lector, and they're made using their in-house filament, so it's uh, glass-filled ABS. Ola from Toronto. Hello. Ola from about three and a half hours south of you. Looking forward to another great stream. Every stream's a great stream, until I have technical issues and everything goes to shit, but you know how it be. You know how it be. Washers, there we go. So we got the shims, we got the bearings. Okay, so. Those are like that. So we got those two pieces. And 335s. Good morning in the morning. Well, it's despite the time. I, I'm since I'm doing two streams a week now, the Saturday stream, the normal Saturday stream is 8 p.m. on a Saturday which I know is late for a lot of the Europeans. So I plan going forward is basically to do a Tuesday stream as well, 
earlier in the day. I don't know if I'll stick with the 10 a.m. time, if we'll like bump it to noon just so it's a little bit more uh, North American friendly. Um, plus, I think a lot of guys in the EU are still at work technically. But we're, we're just going to play around with times for now. Basically, I'm going to stream for four hours today and see when it picks up. And whatever time the most people are online is probably what I'll use as the uh, start time for streams going forward around this on Tuesdays. 5 p.m. there. That's good. So, bearing stack, you know. Washer, bearing, bearing, washer. You know how it be. You know how it be. Barely got the kids out. To... Yeah, little guy starts school in uh, September. That's like time flies. Turns four next month. Like, holy hell getting old okay so the big one gets the little one and then the little one gets the big one Uh, it's it's preschool. So in in like every country does it differently, but in Canada you have JKSK. Well, even in different provinces it's different, but in Ontario you have JK and SK. So junior kindergarten, senior kindergarten. Then you have grade one to eight is grade school, and then nine to twelve is high school. That's how it's done up here. There's no middle school. Okay, so time to put these on. So preload four M3 nuts down that side. That's a lot of nuts. Mike Van, Di Van Nunen, I want to build a Voron so bad. Then build a Voron. They're not that hard to build actually. They're just, you're building it completely from scratch. Okay, so this front one, take note of which way the diagonal is to make sure you put the right one on, pillar in the front. Ralph, it's so tiny. That's what she said. Gets the job done though. Then preloaded nuts, the nuts are fastened in, preloaded, so put that in. Zoom out a bit, just so we get a little bit. There we go. Justin, $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for all the videos. Good luck on the full-time YouTube. Are you running a heart K tool head on any of my builds? I am running one on the switch wire uh, with the Urkfa. All my other builds are pretty much running just your, like the stock setup, no tool head board. Okay, so the front screw here screws into the extrusion. And then the rear screw here screws into a captive T-nut we installed uh, previously in the build. Uh, 
And then also, whenever you tighten down um, something with a bearing in it, when you're done tightening it down, make sure the bearing moves freely. You want to make sure nothing's accidentally binding it up or anything. No cam in the manual scene. Oh. Oh, I turned it off. One second. I forgot. Pop, pop. There we go. I was, uh... Whenever I'm recording the screen for, like, a video, like... So I, I recorded, uh, some stuff for the Whale 2 review, which is doing horribly, but I expected that. Um... Whenever I record anything on the screen, I have to turn off the cam and, you know, monitor and everything. And I always forget to turn it back on. Yeah, that review is not doing good, but that's to be expected. It's a, uh... Like, I fully expected that review not to do good. It is what it is. It's not my normal content. It's a niche resin printer. Resin's already pretty niche. But it is what it is. Wayne, I watched it. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, what's the printer? It is printing a, uh, pull it up here, try it. It's printing a full, it's printing a rat rig V minion. So all the parts for a rat rig min V minion it's printing. So when you put these on just to double check, Make sure that your idler is on the side with, uh, is lined up like the level on the Z height is lined up with the, uh, a, your AB idler should have two gears on the same level or two idlers. So up, up, up one. Yeah. So we're good there. Otherwise you're going to have a bad time. So we put the other one on. Yeah, and there it is. Check your work. Compare the assembled parts of the graphics shown here. Pay attention to the pulley orientation and alignment with the bearing stack. So it looks like we're putting together some Z stuff now. I rotated it myself. Oh, there's a GitHub PR thing. I just downloaded the uh, parts directly off their site. So if that, if how they came off their site is how I put them on. And then I had to rotate them all. And then, I'm realizing there's one part I didn't rotate correctly, so I'm gonna have to reprint it. But I'm gonna reprint a bunch of stuff anyways, cause I'm gonna reprint some stuff for accent parts in fluorescent blue, um, sparkle blue. And then I need to print also some parts because I think the tool head, the Eva tool head in these files assumes you're using a Dragonfly BMS and a LGX Lite. I'm going to be using a Dragon, probably a high flow one, and an Orbiter too. So I'm going to have to change some stuff around. Okay, so now we are at the nut holder. So, get that out. Get my lead screw out. I'm probably going to need it, I'm assuming. My palm nuts. Schlop nut, 20 euro. Thank you, appreciate it. You're killing my work productivity. Time to call it a day. That works. And Rosado, thank you for becoming a member. You guys allow me to th do the things I do. So you guys are all awesome. Is there an orbiter mod for V01? Um, I... I don't, I believe so. I don't know for the Orbiter 2. I believe there is one for the Orbiter 1. Uh, don't quote me on that though. So M312.
Uh, this kit did not come with a Pico. This kit came with an SKR Mini. I'm using a Pico that I have that I got separately from Big Tree Tech. I'm using that for the V Minion. Okay, so. Putting the uh, the nut on to the if I can get it to start. Where did my there it is? Do I have an opinion on fibrology filament? Um, I don't, I've never used it, so I can't really say anything. You need to remember, I live in Canada and some things are just I, either too expensive to use practically or we just don't have. Someone was saying, uh, what's it? I have an idler backwards? What? Sorry to burst your bubble looks when your idler's in the wrong spot. Nope. Define wrong spot. Okay, so you're putting your, uh, the nut holder goes inside like that. Uh, through hole if your lead screw nut does not have M3 threads use longer screws and a nut mine has threads so that just screws in and that mounts to that that mounts to that so it's an M312 up top and that's our end stop so I'm gonna put that M312 up top in right now So this right here, this M312, this is for your uh, end stop. So this is how you adjust your, your Z end stop position. Okay. And then this mounts on using M312s. So. Some more M312s. I have a great selection of maple syrup, but not filament. That's that is true. Okay, for starting a three D printer business, I'd like a Voron. Um, no. So, what do you plan on doing with your three D print business? Are you planning to just print like random knickknacks and sell it, or do you have a contract to produce parts already for something? Um. A Voron's not really optimized for business, okay? Um, it's a great printer, don't get me wrong, but it's also a DIY printer. So you're gonna be responsible for all the maintenance for it, upkeep, everything. It's, it's also several thousand, you know, a thousand plus. Um, if you're just printing little random knickknacks for people low volume, you might be better off with a cheaper off-the-shelf machine like a Viper, for example. Um, which one though? Both of these, same gantry. XY motion is the same. The difference is that bed don't move, that bed moves. Other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same machine. If you plan on printing taller stuff, go with a V2. If you plan on printing shorter stuff, go with a Trident. Because the Trident um, only is spec to 250 millimeters of Z. You can go higher, 
but the trident, as your bed goes up, the whole machine gets more wobbly because center of gravity goes up. Okay, so. That goes like that. I'm assuming the, yeah, that goes like that. So we're gonna want the, it doesn't really matter which way it goes, but put that there. So M3 eights and M3 six. Uh, what's your thoughts on the blue rolls kit? I've never used the blue rolls kit. Um, it's probably like every other kit from like Formbot or it's probably like the Formbot kit where they just took the bill of materials and threw it in a box. So, where'd I put my screwdriver? I had the screwdriver. Where did I put the screwdriver? Somebody go back and watch the stream and tell me where I put my uh, screwdriver. Oh, there it is. Um, I haven't heard good things. I've had, I've heard a lot of people have had like little finicky issues with them. But the problem is a lot of these kits, just some guy, it's like walking down the store in, on AliExpress and throwing whatever they can get cheap for the bomb into a box. So, one kit might be great. The next kit might have a ton of issues. Where's my bag of M36s? Or M38s? Oh, no, I don't have a bag of M38s. I got a whole bloody bin of them. There we go. That's right. Sabajim? Sabajim. Sabajim. 20. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, finally catching on the live stream. Love your videos and streams. Got my flair share of tips, help, and entertainment from them. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I'm glad they're helping out. Swiss francs. There we go. Okay. Swiss is S W I S S francs. F R A N C S, I'm assuming. Um, that CHF. How do you get CHF from that? Although I'm assuming it's probably in France. But no, that doesn't even make sense in French. I don't know. Uh, what's the big benefit of Clipper? Clipper, you're basically leveraging the entire powerhouse of a Raspberry Pi, which is, you know, on the modern ones, a quad core, uh, 1.5 gigahertz equivalent processor to control the printer and do all the motion planning and everything. So you have much more power to work with. Your MCU, your controller board, is pretty much regulated to following instructions from the Raspberry Pi. So you have more brains to work with, and that can open up more. Um, you can you can flex that muscle in other ways. For example, input shaper and whatnot. You could run like input shaper tuning and whatnot. Okay, let me just double check. So we've mounted that. Apply grease. I don't need to apply grease because this is uh, the Teflon coated. Okay, we're not putting it on yet though. So we'll put that aside. Uh, flip the printer upside down. Preload more nuts. Okay. Takes a sick day. I'm not taking a sick day, I'm working right now. Oh yeah, and with Clipper, for example, like if you wanna change something in your config, you just go to machine, printer config, and then you just change whatever you want, you know, and then you just hit save. So if I want to make it like, instead of 16 micro steps, I want to make it 32 micro steps. I would just literally type 32 and hit save and close and then printer reboots and it's done. So it's kind of like rep wrap where you can edit the configuration that way. Would it still benefit from uh, Clipper? In my opinion, yes, I ran uh, Clipper on this guy with a Duet 2 for quite a while. The only reason I swapped it out was I got a, uh, a spider. Bizek sent me a spider for review, so I had to put it in. 
So I needed to swap it out on one machine. So now my duet's collecting dust. Maybe I'll put it in a CNC or something down the line. Okay, putting some preloading more nuts. So three over here, one, two, three. One, a two, three, and then three in the back and three on the other side. Okay, it's a lot of nuts. Any specific board? Depends on the printer, um, and how many drivers you need to control. SKRs are very popular. Um. That's what most people end up using, some sort of form of SKR board for the most part. That's what I've noticed. There we go. How's the spider? Um, so that has a spider 2.2. It's running fine. This has a spider original one, like a 1.0, and it's running fine. I know a lot of people had issues with the 1.0. But I got mine early, uh, the 1.0, which was sent out for review. So I don't know if I got like a, you know, a vetted one. But I know a lot of people have had issues with their spiders, the first generation ones. They like to go pop. Feetsies, where are the feetsies? There are the feetsies. Good source for Clipper. Um, I have a video on my channel. There's a video on my channel, I believe, of installing Clipper on a uh, Duet 2. Or I did it on a stream. I can't remember. I might have done it on a live stream. But I, I did I did record it some way. Okay, where are the feet at? Where are the feet at? Tool head, so I'm assuming they're not in the tool head box. Are they in here? Oh, no, they're in there. And M340s. Uh, on Sunday, I killed an SKR2 board by incorrectly inputting 24 volts through the heater. That'll kill it. Yes, that will. That sucks. That's okay. I've killed an LRS. Uh, I got a spare one. I blew up an LRS um, 5 by accidentally putting in voltage in, like the, the mains voltage into the output. So instead of 5 volts out, I put 120 volts in. It went pop. So... At least it wasn't 48 volts. Well, I'm assuming inputting any voltage to an output is not good. Yeah, that's the thing with the Spider 1.0. It's a QC issue. So either they work and you have no problems, or they fail. There, it's like that's just the thing. Then that's a, that's kind of shitty, but it is what it is. Recently shorted my 24 volt power supply with a screwdriver. Oof. Well, if you watch my intro video, um, you can see what happens when you try to uh, when you try to be fancy and uh, meter out a uh, the heck 
Oh, I have that backwards. When you try to get fancy and meter out a uh, power supply and try to meter out the mains voltage of it. When your power, when your, uh, when your meter ain't uh, met for it. Don't work with wires when they're plugged in. Yeah, but how are you supposed to check voltages if they're not plugged in? Found the duet clipper video. There you go. Yeah, I know I did it on video. Like, I do like Duet hardware. It just... It used to be a lot easier to justify Duet hardware because you got RepRap firmware and compared to Clipper or compared to Marlin at the time, you're looking at like a major leap in performance. Whereas now, you could take a Ramps, put Clipper on it, and it'll outperform a, uh, a Duet 2 in terms of how fast it could run a printer. So... Duet, pretty much you have to be able to sell it on the hardware. And the hardware is good, but the hardware is pricey. So the price to performance isn't as uh, as, as advantageous as it used to be. Okay, so we've put the feet seeds on. And now we're going to put in our lead screw. Robert, thanks for coming a member. So for the lead screw, um, the kit comes with a compressible, like anti-backlash unit. Okay. So for those that have never put these together, there's like little tabs on the unit itself on the, the part that doesn't screw in. So the, there's two plastic parts to your, your nut and then there's a spring. So there's a uh, two tabs. So it'll like index together. Okay. So when you put it together, you put your spring in. You can press them together so that the tabs line up. And then you take your lead screw and you screw it through both. Okay. So the amount of preload in here should be very minimal. It literally should only move as much as there is uh, like play in one thread. Like there should not be a lot of preload there. What, you have a video on it too, Timmit? Okay, everyone go watch Timmit's video. Apparently it's better. Just make sure you do it after the stream. Okay, so preloaded, move two of the preloaded nuts to the left of the stepper. The stepper mounts in the center. Okay, so we've got six nuts underneath here. So take those holding screws out. So I need to move two over to the other side. So we'll move three over and then use the middle two. Head cam, but you're not gonna be able to see it with my head in the way. And then try and center it between the uh, extrusions. So before 
we had six nuts just floating in this extrusion. Now we have two free nuts uh, screwed into to the uh, Z motor and then two nuts on this side. Okay, so we got that and then we got to put two M3 eighths from the front. These are going to be fun to line up. So these ones are going to be a pain because they're captive in there. We got this plate in the way. I got one, I think. Yep, I got one. Uh, what are you doing against the tilting bed on the V01? What do you mean the tilting bed? Can I build an Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder? Um, so the Enraged Ca Rabbit Carrot Feeder works on any printer. Um... That is running Clipper, okay? Um, some guy got it working on RepRap now too. I don't know how easy it is to port that over to other printers, but basically you can run the Enraged Rabbit on any printer running Clipper and I guess rep in RepRap firmware now. However, there are some caveats to it. For it to run the most optimally, you need to have a tool head sensor. You need an end stop in the tool head between the direct feed extruder and the hot end, okay? And that's because of the way it works where it needs to know after it's loaded the filament that it has loaded properly. Now you can not use that, but you have to edit the macros so that it doesn't look for that. And you're pretty much hoping that you never have a jam with it feeding into the tool head. Because right now, if I were to feed the filament in, and it gets stuck, like it gets stuck on the lip of the extruder or something. It doesn't feed into the tool head um, or pass the extruder into the hot end. It knows that and it'll pause and wait for me to fix it. So you can run it without that. But if it decides to jam up on you, you don't have any warning. So you can run it in a dumber mode on pretty much any printer that doesn't have there. But you're kind of on your own. You, there, I don't know if there's no f official configs for that. But I have seen people running Urkfas on... Um, on a V core. I have seen that on the, the rat rig uh, Facebook group, which I had to join because that's where the rat rig community is. And I'm building a rat rig and I hate Facebook, but yeah. When using the printer in high ambient temps, the bed is tilted down in the front over time. Um, I haven't noticed any issues in mine. What filament did you use to print it? And then you could honestly get around that by using the Kirigami bed, which is metal. Okay. So we've got that. So that is mounted. So what I'm going to do now is... Put that in the middle. And tighten up. Because all the screws that I had here for my... Uh, the the T-nut mount were loose. So I'm loosening them up right now just to make sure they're loose, to make sure they are uh, centered on the bed. So put in the middle, tighten it up. And then one trick you can do, um, if you find that your, your lead screw is wobbling, you've tried everything you can do and your lead screw is still wobbling. The, the screws that hold the nut to your carriage, okay? Back them off a little bit. Okay? Like, don't have them tight. Literally have them loose so that they can kind of float a little bit. So these, like, two screws here, right there and right there, that hold the nut to the bed. If you find, no matter what you can do, you can't get rid of binding issues, right? Or, or lead screw wobble. Loosen those up. 
just enough that they can float on the x-axis or the y-axis or whatever the weight of the bed should keep it always preloaded for your zed right because the bed and it, this is more true on like the bigger printers where you got a slab of aluminum um weighing it down but if they float a little bit as your lead screw wobbles the nut will just wobble with it but it won't push your bed around so let's see how it feels so right now everything's snugged up nice and tight What I find is if, if you do have binding issues, you'll, you'll notice the binding issues at the bottom, essentially. That's where you'll notice it. And I think we're good. It all feels good. Yay. So we're good there. Okay. So we've got our Z leaf screw mounted. And now we're on to the carriage. Yay. You over here for now. Some carriage parts. And I keep forgetting, I have this power bar I've got to mount on my wall here so that I can plug stuff into the wall. And I keep forgetting to. So, uh. Sorry, switch wire, I'm stealing your power. That took a moment to turn off. Have you done a mainsail video? I've done videos on uh, like installing, installing mainsail and installing fluid is exactly the same process. So if you watch the fluid video, it's the same. But both of those videos, like my how to install fluid, or uh, is outdated. Um, they're just outdated. They're, it's been like a year, and both fluid and mainsail have gone through a lot of development. So. Gotta put some heat sets in now. It's early. Steve, you must have just gotten up. Because you're uh, West Coast. What are we at right now? 288 viewers? Cool. That is one habit I am so glad I don't have. I don't stare at my viewer numbers. Like that's actually the first time I've checked. But I wanted to get a stream in for the Euro folks. Tuesday streams going forward will be earlier in the day. I don't think I'll... Dennis, thank you for coming to remember. Um, I don't think I'll do 10 a.m. going forward. That is probably a little too early. I might do noon. Um, but we'll see. I'm just looking at the numbers. Because normally, like, my viewer count during a stream is pretty consistent in terms of, like, the chart of when people join. Like, usually I hit my max amount of viewers, like within the first half hour of the stream. And then that number is still going up. So people are still joining in. So I'm assuming more and more people are waking up to join in or getting off work or finishing dinner or whatever. So depending on the time zone. So we might end up doing a little bit later in the day Tuesday, like noon or one in Friday. I'm thinking 2 p.m. New, I'm thinking 1 or 2 p.m. for the Friday stream, my time, and I'm East, uh, Eastern Time Zone for those that don't know. Somebody messaged me when I, cause a while ago, like I put, whenever I post like on Twitter or whatever, like, oh, hey, I'm going live at uh, 8 p.m. EST. Somebody's like, you should use UTC. That's, what, that's the standard. I'm like, okay. Worldwide, yeah. I, I live in North America. Nobody uses UTC. Nobody uses UTC in North America. I, I have no idea what you... I know what UTC is, but I have no idea what my UTC time code is. I think it's negative five. Uh, 
Uh, it would be Tuesdays. The plan right now is uh, Tuesdays and Saturdays are streams. The Saturday stream will remain the 8 p.m. stream. It'll still be the late stream. Um, but Tuesdays, we're still figuring it out of time. At earlier in the day stream, Tuesday. Saturdays will be the regular stream. Fridays, I'm thinking of doing streams on Fridays for random stuff. Like if I get to interview anyone or the CNC, like one-off streams will be Fridays, I think. So Tuesdays and Saturdays will be long build streams or like series. Uh, Fridays will just be random streams and then videos when I get them done, hopefully one a week. So, well, here's what I do. I put the stream up a couple hours early. So if you want to know when the stream starts, if you click on it, YouTube tells you how many hours till the stream goes live. Uh, setting up input shaping on a duet. It's the same. I have an input shaper video already. It's the exact same. Cause you're, you're hooking the input shaper. You're hooking the ADXL up to the raspberry Pi. You're not, there's no controller specific things you need to worry about with input shaper. You can use any, any clipper controller. The instructions are the exact same. Okay, so we put our heat sets in. Uh, which one is it? It's this one. Okay. M325. M316. M325. Negative five UTC. Negative four. And that's another thing. You got time zones and you got daylight savings. I put the streams live early. Just click on the stream. It'll tell you how many hours till it starts. <laughs> okay, so we got bearing stacks here. So, that goes there. So this side right here, we've got a bearing stack with two washers and a spacer on this side, washer, bearing stack, with two washers on each side. Where is Doggo? Uh, so my wife's at work right now and Doggo is being what he does and being a mopey little bastard and sitting at the front door and he won't move. That's where Doggo is. He's uh, being mopey. Uh, I'm tuning my V minion in config. TMC LGX Lite have like stealth chop special zero. Is that okay for PA? Uh, I believe so. stack there building it upside down because it makes it easier where is the kiddo he's at daycare All by myself right now. And on this side, we got spacer. Two washers stack and two washers and one washer or two washer that's one washer
with an M210 self tapper. So now comes the part where you try to flip this over without screwing it all up. There we go. Okay, M2 self tapper. So what do we got for M2? They are ah, crappy Phillips head ones. Oh well. Yep, yeah, just me and the dog, and the dog's ignoring me because mom's not home. Although, he might start freaking out at some point. I'm waiting on delivery. DHL's like, hey, there, there's stuff out for delivery. I'm like, cool. Although, knowing my luck, it won't show up till like... 6 p.m. like normal. Small Phillips. I called my 3D printer a CNC glue gun and they kicked you out. It's pretty much true of what it is though. Like these are glorified cheap CNCs with a hot glue gun that spews out molten plastic. There's really nothing fancy about these machines. Dang it, I don't know where my good one is. I had a really good bit for these and I don't know where it went. Oh, is that it? I think that's it. Reckle, 1111. Thank you, appreciate it. Building a Lecter V01 along with you. The lead screw nut holder install tip really helped me out just now. Thanks for the great streams. Glad they helped out. So this screw that goes into here is a self tapper. As always with all self tappers, don't over tighten it. In the 70s, they would have been miracle machines. Oh yeah, like back in the day, yeah. So one's done. And now we do the other side. Uh, expecting this to be on later this evening for me in the UK. Well, I either do it early so that y'all can watch when you're not, you know, oh, dark, stupid out, or I do it early. But we went with early today. Although, I think I am gonna... This might be too early. I'm thinking. So, next Tuesday stream might be, uh, at, like, noon or something. Oops, what am I doing? Yeah, all these are Lecter. Yeah, these are all in-house. Um, I guess the Lecter has their own filament line now. Like, they make their own filament. So, uh, these are their glass-filled ABS. But I like the time. I'm just going off the numbers. I want to try and find a time that works for the most amount of people. That's the goal. Like, honestly, um, I'm free till six. So I have like an eight hour window where there's no, it's just me basically. 
Well, actually, no, that's not true. The wife gets off work at 2, but she doesn't have to pick up the little guy until 6, so. She's got errands or whatever, shopping, she'll go out and do that. Although, I'm supposed to be snowed in for, like, the next two days, so we'll see. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll finally do the Urkfa video. <laughs> I know you guys are bugging me for that. I don't know if Lecter's in here. I do want to purchase this. I don't know if they're sell plan on selling this filament. I do want to get some of this filament. It'll probably be stupid for me to get it because shipping from, you know, Europe to North America for filament, something that's heavy, is kind of not the greatest. But just, you know, using this filament for the build and just kind of... Oh, don't screw up, don't screw up. Um, I'm liking, like, the texture of it, the way it's feeling. So I, I do want to maybe get a spool or two of this stuff just to, just to play around with. Oh, we'll send. Okay, that works. I need, I need more food for Toasty. I gotta start printing, uh, I got V minion parts printed, I gotta start printing Micron parts, I think, today. Or this week, at least. Okay, so on this one, it's the opposite. So that is correct there. Put the top on. Yep, so that matches. Okay, so we're putting the rail on. So I kind of goofed and I forgot to print off a jig. So I'm gonna have to manually line this up, which is gonna suck. But for this rail, how many we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Don't lose the stoppers. Um, this is modded, so this uses an MGN and it's a 9H or it's a 9H carriage and it, it does work. Don't worry. So I'm running an MGN 9H carriage on this. So I'm gonna need some M M38s, I think. I don't know. M38s might be too long. Nope, that'll work. So let's see here. Let me let me find it. No, don't switch. Uh, I have got way too many messages. There's Lecter. So yeah, so we are using, uh, nope, where is it? So this does have different parts, but that's okay because they're included with the kit, I believe. So we're good. Yeah, so that's what we're using. Do I ground my printers? I ground the bed. Did I find my uh, microfit kit on Alley? No, my microfit kit, um, I use, it's not a kit, I built the kit. I bought the individual components off AliExpress ages ago. And I just bought like 30 of each connector and just a whole whack load of pins. And I use that. So it's not a kit per se. It's I, I made my own kit.
Okay, so it uses M3 six nuts. Trying to get these started. And I did clean up and pre-grease and everything in this rail, so it's good to go. ABS Plus isn't supposed to be stronger. AB, the, the Plus in ABS Plus means it's mixed with something. So technically ABS plus for the most part is actually a percentage weaker than normal ABS. Um, but what you get though is easier to print. That's usually what the plus means. It's, it's easier to print ABS. Um, so in terms of like, which is more better, it's a 3d printer for 99.9% .9 of use cases. You're not going to notice any difference really, uh, which one you go with. Um, but basically the difference between good ABS and good ASA isn't much in, in real world use case in a 3d printer. A printer built out of good quality ABS and a printer built out of good quality ASA, 90% of people won't be able to tell the difference. Like it, you're, you're, it's, it's so close. It's not really even worth trying to figure out which is which. Um, when it comes to ABS plus, ABS plus is a little bit more flexible than ABS and ASA. A ASA is the stiffest I've noticed. The downside of it being the stiffest, if you have a nozzle crash, you're more likely to crack something, so. Can you be in the PIF program um, with just the V01? I'm gonna say you can, but please don't. You'd be insane. Like, please don't. <laughs> That's just nuts. Please don't. Like, yes, you can print every part of a Voron on a V0, but you're, like, printing, like, one part at a time. Versus the PIF guys that are, like, running maximized plates of, like, everything at once. Okay, so 25 mil. Okay, so there. we're okay there I don't have a, uh, a jig for this because it's mod so I'm kind of just making sure we're squared up within Is 0 0.05 millimeters straight enough over? Yeah, 0 0.05 millimeters I can live with. <laughs> I can live with 0 0.05 millimeters of uh, if you're within an eighth of a nozzle width, you're good. Okay. 
So we got that on. Preload two M3 nuts. Yeah, uh, PIF print is printed forward, so it's um, it's grown way larger than anyone thought it ever would because so many people want to build Vorons right now. But basically, it's people who have Vorons printing parts for those who want to build Vorons at a very reasonable cost. Um, way lower than you can get from like any dedicated print service. And all the parts are printed on Voron, so it's kind of like a, an indicator of Voron quality kind of thing. You know, to print PIF, you need to own a Voron and print them on a Voron. Okay, preload two M3 nuts on the bottom. Don't tighten, leave the screws. Okay, so M312s here. And now we put the ends on. That's good. So we'll loosen those up. Okay. Put that in. Grab our other side. Same thing. So I know this screw has to come out, but I'm gonna put one in just so it is in position. Uh, currently sourcing a 2.4. Go with the single MGN12. Go with the single MGN12. That is what 2.4 R2 will be, which is the next uh, update to the 2.4. So you might as well get it now. If you happen to start building before um, your parts come... Uh, if you happen to start building before 2.4 R2 comes out and you get to the gantry, just use the X gantry, so the XY joints and the tool head parts from the Trident because it's the same. It's the same parts uh, as 2.4 R2. How often do you tighten your belts? Uh, usually once. All my machines use Gates belts. Um, so what I'll do is I'll install them. I'll run a few prints for a bit. I'll do a heat soak of the chamber for a couple hours, run another print, and then I'll tighten the belts because usually there's like a break-in period. That's what I had to do with the Trident here. And uh, yeah. So flip over M36 on the bottoms. Loosen that up. Three, six. So I'm printing the board cue the dial and printer. I'm getting bulged corner. Seems like reducing external printing speed improves the slicer is supposed to fix that. Does that sound right? Have you run pressure advance yet? Or input shaper? Because that will affect, affect that number in the bulged corners.
But yes, usually if you go slower, you get cleaner corners. But what is slow? Like, I don't know what numbers you're running. Also, one single cube is a horrible way to tune a printer, by the way. Don't, don't tune a printer based off a single print. Especially if you're, like, printing ABS. If you're printing ABS, you want to print, like, multiple prints at the exact same time. Because ABS gets funky when you print one thing really hot and fast. Too much heat getting dumped in one area of the, by the nozzle. So it's not indicative of normal printing. Okay. your work make sure your idlers are in the same spots and we're good there side view boom boom we're good now we put it in and we mount them with m26s itty bitty m26s Any good designs for shifting a V2 to a V0 style backpack wiring setup? Um, I don't believe so. You could put an external box on it. Um, why is my camera looking foggy or is that just the, oh, that's just the monitor I got it on. I gotta get a better monitor for that. Um, I've seen, there. there is some, I think the rail core box is compatible. Like you can use like, basically you just design a box, make it out of extrusion, it's pretty part of just slap it on the back, call it an egg. Uh, the V1 has an internal backpack, but that's the V1. And that, it bumps in what you can't do on a V2, so. I have zero idea how the gantry moves. Okay, um, so it's quite simple actually. Let me get my uh, old V0 here, which we're going to be doing some upgrades to this in the future. Okay, so this is Core XY motion. Okay, you got you got your AB motors and it's Core XY. So these motors moving together, okay, is how you get front to back movement and side to side movement. And then when one more motor moves and one doesn't, you get diagonal movement. Okay, and then it's the opposite for the other motor. Okay, so motors working together and apart, that's how you get your XY movement. How the switch wire does it, is it takes this motion system and does this. It makes it vertical, okay? So now you have your Z movement and your X movement, okay? And then your bed moves back and forth underneath. That's how the switch bar works. It's core X set. It's core X Y, but vertical. So you can't do this on a Prusa where you just kind of lift it up and pull it down. Easy piece. Okay. M two sixes. Where are they? M two sixes right here. Uh, so I use two electric screwdrivers uh, for different sizes. I have an ES one twenty six. Um, which I like more. It's got more torque. And then I have a wow stick. I use the wow stick for the smaller stuff because it's got less torque. If you're going to buy one, get the ES-126. I'm just using the wow stick because that's got the little bit in it. And it's and it's narrower, so I can get in smaller spots. But for overall use, ES-126. The wow stick is not powerful enough to tighten M3s properly. Put it that way. So this is why you don't tighten your um, screws yet, 
because you got to kind of find where they got to go. So get some M2s out. What are the benefits of Corex Z? Uh, faster Z motion. So if you Z hop a lot, which most of us do, um, it's faster, lighter gantry. You have no motor on your gantry now. Um, you don't have to worry about lead screw wobble ever. So lead screw wobble is just not a thing. It's cheaper uh, versus a dual lead screw driven setup. And uh, whenever you're doing like a bed mesh, you don't have any extra noise generation by having your Z motors constantly tick because both your motors are always running. M2, 6, DIN, 7, 9, 9. I don't know. Are they button heads? Oh, no. They're the, the those little ones. Okay, let me find those ones. Are they button heads or flat heads? Flat head cap screw. Okay. Oh, there they are. Flat head cap screw. Why do we have flat heads there? Well, it has to do with the geometry. Um, somebody is sending me a Kirigami bed, um, but it hasn't arrived yet. If you buy this kit, it comes with the Kirigami bed. Um, the kit I have here is a pre-production one, so he didn't have the beds in stock when he shipped me this, so I don't have a Kirigami. But if you buy this printer kit from Lecter, it comes with the Kirigami bed, okay? So I have the Kirigami bed coming in. Um, I don't think it'll come in in time to put on this because we might end up putting the bed on this today. So if it doesn't show up in time, um, I might put it on this guy because this guy needs some updates. Oh, there's an extra bed in it. This guy needs some updates badly. So we might put the Kirigami bed in there and the uh, LGX light instead of putting the LGX light in there because that's already direct feed. That V0 is Bowden. So we'll see. Why is it called a switch wire? Um, because originally it was wire drive. It was originally a capstan printer. I don't know if I have an Allen key small enough for these. Um, so the original um, build of it was capstan. It was wire drive. And RCF actually had it up and printing. It's just getting it consistent is an absolute nightmare. So it was switched to belt. I don't know if I have any will that fit in there. That will fit in there. Okay. I don't know if I have a bit small enough for these. No. No. I don't think I have a bit small enough for these. <laughs> there is a 1.3 millimeter key in the kit. One point four five. Did I take it out last stream and forget to put it back in? Oh no, there we go. I still have some electric. I have a lot of the candy. I'm hiding it. I'm on a diet. There we go. Now we got to put in all these little itty bitty screws while I drop them everywhere. Chris Polk, make your other gantry, a, make your other zero flying gantry. I have a micron on the way. I already have a, a, a Voron micron. 
that I'm going to be building. When drunk build. I don't know. If, if you guys get me... Maybe when I get a YouTube play button. We'll play it. We'll, we'll, that'll be the... Uh, the 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 carrot on a stick. Only seventy three thousand or no seventy two thousand subscribers to go. Still X still eight Steve two ninety nine. Thank you, appreciate it. Whiskey induced Prusa X. Um, that I might have to be sober for. Oh yeah, and for the Prusa XL, um, I don't know if they're going to sell it as kits or like fully built, but we are going to be building the kit variant, I hope. Oh man, I hate these little screws. I'm, like destroying this Allen key. kit build is content exactly it's all content like part of me was actually tempted to build this as like a, a build series like a like an instructional build series but instead of live stream it but the thing is when I live stream it it's everything and it's just easy to follow along with Like, I, I'd probably go crazy trying to build one of these without having people to talk to. <laughs> yes, this is an MGN 9H mod. Where am I going to put the XL? I have till Q3 of 2022 to figure that out. And apparently not all pre-orders will ship this year, according to the Prusa's blog. Um, so... I've got time. Because I didn't pre-order mine right away. I, I pre-ordered mine a few days after the pre-orders went live. So I'll probably be on the... Uh, I don't know if I'll get one this year. Because I don't think I'm on Prusa's radar to get a, uh, a review kit. I don't, I don't think I qualify for that. By my own. Yes, you can use a Clockwork One with Stealth Burner. Any of the existing um, extruders work with Stealth Burner. That's an LGX. That's an LGX, and Tallboy is running a Clockwork One. It had a Galileo before. Why'd I switch it out? Why not? Okay, one of these is too tight. Now, center the extrusion, or center the rail, so it's equal on both sides. Come to the front, lock it all down. in put that block in that block square the gantry and put those on top okay 
So make sure we're all squared up. Tighten everything up. No, there is, the R2 is not out yet. There won't be a uh, public beta. I think it'll just be a release. It's basically we're working on the manual right now. What electric screwdriver? ES-126 WOW stick. WOW stick I use for small stuff. It's got balls for torque. It's got no, or it's got no balls for torque. So if you're gonna get one, get an ES-126. The only thing I like about the WOW stick is it's thinner. Okay, so we're good there. Those can come out. Cross. Okay, so now I gotta put the M3 on with an M3 in. Okay. M3 10s, M3 12s, M3 12s, M3 12s, M3 16s, M3 16s, M3 16s, M3 16s. Well, yeah, it makes sense for Joel to get one. Kind of what he does. What am I printing on the Trident? I am printing uh, V minion parts. A whole plate of them. Well, all of them, basically. It's funny, a Voron, it's like five or six plates over a couple days for all the parts for a Voron. For a V-Minion, it's one plate. <laughs> one day. Done. So, if you're looking down from the top, there is a, uh, this right here is your end stop adjustment for your X end stop and then your Y end stop mounts there. Okay, so that's mounted. Screw is used to trigger the X stop. Okay, square in the gantry, move the gantry all the way back until it hits both sides. Boom, boom. Tighten the screws. I did it off the front, but it's same. Go. Look at that. That works. And then we got to put some tops on. So we've got some M3. Eights I gotta preload, or correction, M3 nuts I gotta preload. Looks like on the outside and the top. And then I also have to preload two more nuts on the top for the um, the LEDs, I believe. So it's, what is it? Yeah, so preload two on the inside. What are the inside ones for? Oh, the extrusion, yeah, so two on the top, Three on the side, two on the inside. Yeah, these are for the top hat. So two. Two. And then three on the outside. Yeah, because the 
top hat, yeah, it doesn't mount to the top. Yeah. And that just goes in there. Two. So the one difference with this over the regular instructions is you need to mount on the top here. Normally you only put three and two for M3 nuts. On the top here, you gotta put two in and that's for the uh, LEDs. When you wanna get your mm -mm on. Okay. Put those in, M310s all around. Three tens. When will Super Slicer get tree support? Probably after Prusa Slicer gets it, because Super Slicer is based on Prusa Slicer. Prusa, oh, AliExpress have sold the, are selling the, uh, the heat plates for Horons. Well, here's the thing. Are they selling the heat plates? Are they selling the Prusa ones or they just make some knockoff that they're selling? That's the question. Dollar, thank you for becoming a member. Because with AliExpress, you, you don't know what you're getting really half the time or what they're selling. Will I make a dummy's guide for resin printing? Resin printing is already pretty dummy proof. As long as your slicer settings are good, you print and you're done. Like there really isn't much more to it. <laughs> So one thing I want to try, another greasing thing I want to try. So let me get that and some gloves. So this is another thing I want to try with greasing. Because we all know trying to re-grease these is an absolute pain. Um, let me get a glove. So apparently, here's another trick. We're gonna try another trick for greasing up carriages. Uh, we've already done the grease through the back of a hole. Are the rails black? Uh, just the MGN9. I don't know if the kit comes with one, because I think this is the one thing they're waiting on for the kit before they ship is the MGN9s. Okay. So apparently the trick is um, you take your carriage and you put it over one of the holes with a screw in it and then you kind of like force the grease up into it. So yeah, that's just going to make a mess. <laughs> Yeah, this is gonna make a mess. Yeah, that actually kind of works, maybe. 
It just makes a mess. There we go. But as you can see, like the wipers, if you if you try to put grease on, I did come out the other side. It came out the other side. But you can see like the wipers just prevent most of the grease from getting in. Like you're not getting grease on the ball bearings. That's the problem. That was worth a shot. Slather grease on everything and then wipe it off. This way these rails won't ever rust on you. You know they're covered in stuff so they don't rust. <laughs> uh, maybe if I had a finer needle that would work. But I only have the... Uh... The dropper. John, thank you for coming, member. It's only grease. That would probably work if I had a uh, uh, a finer needle for that. David's here. Hi, David. Everyone say good morning, David. Also, shouldn't she be at work right now? Oh, wait. Okay. So we put those in, we put those in, and now it looks like that. So now we're gonna put on, I guess we're running belts already. Printers use a belt path based on the popular core XY pattern. Belt paths stacked top of each other. Uh, to learn the principle behind core XY, visit here. What's this video go? Oh, here we go. Neat. Okay. Uh, equal belt tension is important for the proper function of a core XY motion system. Oop. Uh, Girthy, girthedin, girthedin, ten dollars. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, not have much time lately, but I've been interested in your kit buildups. Are you going to spend time to condense the information done in review of the kits and overview the build videos? Um, the Trident. I've already, I do an AR like um when I've done the builds, I do do like a review of the kit now. So I do have one for the LDO kit that I previously built. I will be doing one on the Trident once I get some hours on it printing. Um. But in terms of like condensing the whole stream down into one video, that's a lot of editing. Like these, the Trident is seven parts of three to four hour streams. That's a lot of editing if I wanted to like make it down to one video type thing. Uh, but it is something that I'd like to do with some of my streams is kind of condense them down to like a video. But I'd have to download the whole stream and then edit it. And that's a, a lot of editing. And the problem I have is I'm one of those people that hates cutting stuff out. I'm like, I like all this. Why do I want to, I don't want to get rid of any of it. So just nine hour stream condensed down to eight hours and 30 minutes. Am I on the ignore list or something, Greg? Nope, you are not on the ignore list. We've got 320 people talking. Well, 320 people in chat, a lot of people talking. So if I miss something, I try to watch, see every comment, but I do miss stuff occasionally. It happens. Okay, so we got to put some heat sets in here. So plug this back in. Don't grab the hot iron. That would be dumb. Uh, donation was Smith. Greg? When did you... Let me scroll. Oh! Sorry about that. Greg, hope you get an XL review. I hope I do too. I've already pre-ordered one. 
So, I'm getting one regardless. Sometimes I don't hear the uh, notification for some reason. So again, this uses a modded carriage. This is an MGN 9H carriage versus the MGN 7 that is stock. What soldering iron? Whatever the cheapest uh, soldering iron off Amazon was when I bought it like four years ago. And then I used the LDO um, heat set tool in it. Silent Step, thank you for coming to member. Is that Vorn printing ABS in the background? Are you not worried about VOCs? Nope, I am not. I am not worried in the slightest about VOCs. Spent seven years working in a plastic injection tool shop building plastic injection molds next to a 3,000 pound injection molding press that would go through thousands of pounds of ABS a day. I'm not concerned about that printing one kilogram over two days. Remember, cooking bacon gives off VOCs. It's all about limits. Exposure and amounts is what really matters. Okay, so now we gotta run the belts and we attach them. So I gotta find those two little doodads, which are an absolute pain. If I get an XL review unit, will I cancel my order? Um, if I get an XL review unit that I have to send back, no. If I get one that I get to keep, probably, because I, I don't have one room for one XL. We gotta figure out where we're putting one XL. Two, we'll see. <laughs> okay, time to run some belts. But we'll see. I, I doubt I'll get a review unit. I highly doubt I'm on Prusa's radar for that. Mmm, bacon. Bacon is always good. So it's really easy to do, or it's easier to do this um, when you have something small and pointy, like tweezers or whatever, to kind of force the belts along the path you want to go around radiuses and whatnot.
Okay, so that's the top one. I think they gave me enough belt here. <laughs> Pretty sure I got enough belt. <laughs> I might have enough belt. it takes to get your parts from Piff. Um, right now, depends where you live in the world, and it could be a while. Um, I know the USQ is quite large. Oh, I, I goofed up. I goofed up. Oh no! I goofed. I did goof. Somebody called it earlier in the stream and I didn't, I didn't see it. That is supposed to be there. Okay, let's fix this. Let's fix this. No biggie. We can fix it. Just like Bob said. Just like Bob said. We can fix it. We can fix it. We will make this work. Yeah, somebody called it out early in the stream, and I thought they were talking about the front idlers. I'm like, no, they're good. Nope. Which is funny, because I checked it. I must have been looking the wrong way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now I've got to turn those around. Oh, this is going to be fun. And rebuild these. So... I'm going to do this the lazy way, okay? I'm going to do this the lazy way. Instead of trying to rebuild both of these correctly, I'm just going to go get some spare bearings that I have and just fix and put two here. So instead of rebuilding both stacks, I'm just going to rebuild the one stack. And uh, whoever ends up getting this kit, because this kit will go somebody, will have some extra uh, bearings included in case they need some. I think that's I think that's fair. I think that's a, a fair uh, swap. Do I accept fan mail? I don't have a PO box at the moment. I don't know if I it's worth getting one. People have asked me, so I might. But at the moment, I do not have a P.O. box. And... up so I have a little bit of room to work with. Okay. Okay, so
And of course I drop it right into a hole. Get that out. So we put ourselves a bearing stack there. Let's build this up. Let's build this up properly. So. And M3 washers, I'm gonna need some extra washers. No, not M5 washers. M3 washers. Okay, so what we are doing is because I goofed, instead of rebuilding two bearing stacks without taking apart an AB uh, motor, we're going to rebuild one and just leave the extra one with some extra bearings. Um, so whoever ends up getting this printer will have some extra bearings in it in case they need them in the future. They won't have to go buy some. So think of it as a little gift. Because don't forget, somebody is getting this printer. Um, I'm giving away this printer at some point. Whenever... Um, once the Sanjay Foundation is set up, we will be doing a giveaway. Uh, a donation stream where we're going to raise some funds for a good cause. And somebody gets this printer as part of it. So... I wish I had my tweezers for this. One washer. Two washer. to hold this on. Um, where is my grease? Should have some grease around here. That'll work. That'll work. There we go. Got it. Got him. We're good. We're good. We are good. We are good. Screw all this back together.
Where do I put my Allen key? <laughs> Allen key, where'd you go? So what we did was because I done goofed and I had a bearing and a nidler stack backwards, um, there's supposed to be a spacer here and then two bearing stacks here. I just built another bearing stack. So now we have this extra bearing stack that's doing nothing, but it's quicker and easier than rebuilding the whole thing. And uh, whoever gets this printer gets some free bearings along with it. So um, yeah. That's what we did. So it's like when you buy a shirt. You know when you buy a button shirt and there's an extra button sewn on the inside in case you need it? Well, now this has extra bearings in case you need it. So. John Clark, 13 months. Ooh, over a year and you put up with me. How do I do it? Um, I don't hit the ban button. That helps. <laughs> I can't believe it's in that long, honestly. Time flies when you're having fun. I just had a quick look at the Duet 2 Clipper. It seems easier to get a different board and start from scratch. If you want. Like, all you have to do really is, uh, the main thing is you have to, uh, let me go, okay, that's the top, is you have to put it in uh, developer mode to flash it. Which, if you want to, that's what you got to do. If you don't want to do it, grab another board. Also, the 2206s, the 22, uh, while they are nice drivers and I really like them, they do lack a lot of the the, the creature comforts of TMC 2209s, for example, like Stealth Chop 2. Or Spread Cycle 2, or whatever it's called. Oh, I forgot that goes. This is up top. That goes around there. That goes around there. there that comes up the top that goes over that idler okay so that's that one okay so now we can continue on where we left off the belts are kind of on this little guy because it's so small and there's really not much you can do in terms of like tensioning them up until they're all in um you're probably just going to have belts everywhere until you get it all put together and then you can kind of Make sure they're all sitting on the bearings nice and pretty and whatnot. So at first, just kind of kind of jam them in there for now. Make them look right after. I have my tweezers right now. Where are you 
at? Where are you at, Donald? There you are. Get out of there. Come on. I'm just going to go on Amazon and buy like a 20 pack of tweezers and just put them everywhere so I keep, don't keep losing them. Okay. That goes there. That goes there. Go around to the front. Move around that. Back there. Rotate, rotate, pivot, there we go. There we go. Uh, Anton. BGN $5. I have no idea what that is, but thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, check the orientation on the top extrusion. As far as I remember, there are no nuts at the top. There are because this uh, build, part of the kit is LEDs that mount up top. So that you do need two nuts up there. So we have two on the inside uh, for the top hat, two on the top for the LEDs, and then three on the outside for the... Uh, for the... Uh, panels so it is correct don't worry why do i have so much extra belt like i'm not complaining about extra belt extra belt is always good but and they are tension the same too that's good okay so those are all the way in that's good so now the fun part this is like the most finagly annoying part of the build is getting your M3 XL uh, nuts tightened. Like they're just a pain, unfortunately. And there's really no getting around that. Uh, Merv, $10, thank you, appreciate it. Big pack of tweezers, big pack of tweezers. Bulgarian Lev, okay, oh, that's cool. Yeah, TMC 22 or 2226s or whatever are pretty much the same as 2209s. There's really not much functional difference between them. Okay. So this is an absolute nightmare. I hate doing this part of the build and that is getting these stupid little M3s tensioned against the nuts. Every time I do it, I end up stripping one of these and it never comes out good. Now, luckily I have spares. I've got oh, like a 20 pack of these M3 nuts. So if I do screw them up, but I got backups. Oh, they might be okay. Oh, we're good. We got him. Got him. Got one at least. Yeah, never cut your belts flush. Well, I think on this, on a V0, I think you have to after everything's tensioned. But, uh... Yeah, don't cut your belts flush until you need to cut them flush. Unless you absolutely have to, because once you cut them flush, that's it. They're, you can't reinstall them on a V0. There's just no way to do it. There's no way. It's Well, there is a way. You, you take off your front idlers so that you can have tension, and then you tension by putting your front idlers back on. That's how you do the belts on a V0. Um, if you cut them flush and you have to redo it. 
Oh yeah, we're good. Okay, now I gotta tighten these up. So get them the same. So, so the top one. So if these are the bottom ones, hopefully they cut them the same length. I think they did. So if the bottom one is one tab longer, or yeah, let me see. The bottom one's one tab shorter. So on this one, the bottom tab should be one tab longer. Yeah, so we're good there. So we tighten these up. And I think that should be it. That's, there we go. Nice and tight and taut. And we can still have adjustment back there. But basically, like always, all Vorons have adjustment for the belts built into the machine. So you can tweak the adjustment of your belts. So what you wanna do though, you still always wanna tension them as much as you can before going to the adjustment. So don't, don't do them loose and fasten them loose and then just, oh, I'll just get the tension out with the adjustment knobs. Always try and tension them as much as you can manually and then the adjustment knobs are for tweaking. Uh, Oliver, five euro. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, catching you live. Good luck on the full time. I'm hoping it works out. Uh, is it worth the extra money and go for resonance optimized stepper motors? Um, I think those are snake oil. I've seen that one video that a few people shared around and they're like, you have to buy the special motors from like one company. I, I, I think they're snake oil. I, I, I don't believe those are a thing. We forgot to put a heat set in, by the way. So I'm gonna do that now. We forgot to put, I did the two in the back here. I forgot to do the one in the front. So I gotta do the one in the front right now. So while that's heating up, how do I hold this on? Yeah, so we've already done the belt path, M36. So let's put this on, let's mount this. How long is this one? M38, and there's M36. M36. Yeah, you don't need to, yeah, you don't need to cut, yeah. Just go with the manual says. Printer still printing, yeah. What Super Chat is, it's basically donating. So on uh, Twitch, you can gift subs. On YouTube, you can't gift subs yet. Apparently that is coming though. Or gift memberships, I guess, since it's YouTube. But on uh, YouTube for donating, it's called a super chat. So you, you you donate a fixed amount. I think you can talk more on, to, you know, say more. You gotta pay more, pretty sure. But it, then it pops up like how Oliver's comment there is highlighted and it, a little thing pops up on my screen here because I have it all set up for that that dopamine response it's what plants crave okay I need a heat set where are my heat sets Other than pulley and probe length, which I check for probe accuracy. Um, it could always be the probe itself. Unfortunately, there's so much variance now with the quality of the probes. Um, but also make sure all your grub screws are nice and tight on your Z axis. So anything on the Z, make sure all your, your grub screws are tight. Or your set screws or whatever you want to call them. That was hot. Okay, so we got that on. Run the belts first. Saw the belts prior to fixing the XY cat. Yeah, there's no way you could tighten this with the, the belts. On. Like, there's no way you could tighten the belts before or after screwing the carriage on. So we've got that on. Um, all our belts are good. That was our motion. Everything's 
everything seems to be good. Oh, yeah, hey, don't put your thumb on a hot heat set. Uh, how's that? That's good. That's good. I may have to adjust those pulleys up and down a little bit, but we'll see. I think we're okay. If I gotta adjust them, I could adjust them. Okay, what next? So belt tension. Um, how are we on belt tension? For me on the V0, when I do belt tension, um, two things. I, I go at the back, I move the carriage to the front, and I go off the back. And you basically want to make sure these are pretty much the same amount of tension. And you want to make sure you got no racking. And eh, I got a bit of racking. So they're not... Yeah, they're not perfectly tensioned. Oh, got a bit. So um, I think it's... Yeah, it's the opposite, so... same tighten down the motors you might have to adjust later as always once you kind of break them in but for now we should be okay on the V0, there's less of a break-in period because it's, uh, belt runs are so short. Okay. That actually might be a little too tight on the belts. We'll see. You don't want your belts too tight. If your belts are too tight, you're gonna run into issues. So. Ton Henry, Ton Henry, Tune Henry. Thank you for coming to member. Hi all, KB3D. Good morning. Yeah, everyone keeps asking. I'm using a Wow stick, but don't buy a Wow stick. Buy an ES126 or equivalent. The Wow stick doesn't have enough. The Wow stick can't tighten M3s. Put it that way. Like the Wow stick, this cannot tighten M3s. This can't. So you know what? Because people keep asking, I'm gonna swap. I normally just keep a, a bit in the M, in the S126 for full size M3s and a bit for button head M3s and M2s in the Wow stick, but uh, yeah, we'll just keep using the S126 because that's the better one. There we go. Okay. So adjust tension, blah, blah, blah. Do the small size of the belt path require tension may feel higher compared to a larger printer, but this mainly due to the short belt runs and belt stiffness. Hey, the bed. Okay. So I've got to cut down these belts. So we're going to, we're going to chop some off the belts for now. So I'm just going to chop them a bit long for now and then we'll save this. I don't know why I saved these little pieces of belt, but maybe I'll weave a basket one day. Move that to the back. Oops. 
Do I run a help a filter? Nope, none of my printers have filters. Normally what I do, all my printers are sealed up, okay? I don't have exhausts or fans or anything, but all my printers, the panels all around them, at least the printers that I print ABS with, um, they all have foam gasket around them, okay? So all the panels have gasket around them. So pretty much all the icky stuff, for the most part, stays in the printer. Um, ABS, the bad stuff in ABS fumes, it's like an oily residue. Um, it clings to walls and whatnot. So what you do is you just enclose your printer up and you just keep everything inside because the hot stuff, hot air rises, so all the gunk will stay in the printer if the, the panels are all sealed up. Um, so yeah, you'll smell it, but what you'll see is after a couple months of printing, the inside of your panels get all kind of greasy and oily and they've got like this brownish tinge to them. And if you wipe them off, you'll see it, but that's all the gunk. So print inside an enclosed printer that's sealed up and don't open the printer until the chamber cools back to room temperature. All the yucky stuff will kind of settle inside the printer and won't be floating around your room. At least that's what I subscribe to. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five printers that are enclosed for ABS and other plastics. I'm not gonna have exhaust systems on all of them. Normally, I'm not in this room as well when the printers are printing for long periods of time, but I'm streaming right now, so. Was that a bot? Yeah, that was a bot. So one second here, let me add that to my bot list. So what is it, vor.ngo, copy. Okay, uh, chat bot, spam filters. Okay, see if that works. See if that works. F, what do you mean F? F, what do you mean F? F. What, what are the Fs for? Refresh the stream. What do you mean refresh the stream? What, what's going on? Oh, I don't know. It's YouTube showing me excellent connection. All good. All good. Yeah. Okay. Just refresh. I don't know. It's showing me I got an excellent connection. No drop frames. We're good. Not my fault. It's not my fault. Not my fault. Okay. Um, so this came with little itty bitty adjustment knobs for the bed, I believe. So we don't need to do the heat sets for the bed. Let me find them in here. Let me find the bed. Yeah. So we've got adjustment knobs and springs and whatnot. So we got the bed right here. Spam filter shenanigans made loading wheel of dead. That's weird. Huh. Okay. Right. I don't know. Don't worry. It's all content. It's all content. Okay, so I forgot. I got to put the uh, the magnet on this. So we'll go ahead and put the magnet on this right now. Um, so let's just follow the instructions. So the instructions say put that on, put the magnet on. So I got to... How do you put the magnet on? Well, some guy has this awesome video right here on how to put a magnet on if YouTube decides to load. I've got a one gigabit fiber connection and I can't get YouTube to load. Damn it. I got a one gigabit fiber connection and I can't get YouTube to load. Okay. 
Anyways. Where were we at? Yeah. Did I get a pre-assembled bed? I do have a pre-assembled bed. It just doesn't come with the magnet pre-attached. You gotta put the magnet on yourself. Cause this bed comes, uh, they send a Graviflex magnet with this kit, which is like a really good magnet. So we gotta peel off this stuff and put the magnet on. How do magnets work? I don't know. Voodoo. It's always voodoo. Okay. I bought like a pack of like a box of gloves from Costco. And like the most recent ones, these are like the thinnest gloves ever. And they just fall apart. Like these gloves are absolutely horrible. And normally the Costco gloves are good. Would a bed with a recessed magnet be better? Like, are you talking about like individual magnets? Um, yes and no. So the advantage of using these kind of magnets, you can get high temp magnets that work just fine for to like ABS temperatures. That's what we've been using for years on Vorons, no problem. Um, the advantage of using these style of magnets is twofold one you could do this at home you don't need a cnc machine or a mill to pocket out pockets or you don't need to buy a custom made bed you can do this with any slab of aluminum and a drill drill your holes and just stick stuff to it um two when you're using a probe like an inductive probe um when it's probing the bed the magnets can throw off the probe there's two ways around that you either have to have your probe set up so that it never probes areas that are near magnets because it'll throw your reading off, or when you use a flex magnet like this, it's consistent across the bed, so it doesn't matter. So, there's that. So, we got to put this on. So, this is how I put magnets on. I've always done it this way. It works. Um, nice, shiny surface. I'm going to scuff the hell out of it. Okay. Because when you scuff it up, I find the magnet sticks better. So I just use like a light um, sandpaper block. Don't go crazy high grit. You're basically just scuffing. I've done this with an SOS pad. I just don't have an SOS pad down here. So just scuff it up a bit. Get your ISO. Get some paper towels. And you're gonna want this clean. Yucky. You want it clean. Matt R, two ninety nine. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, if you're using something like a clicky probe or whatever, then yeah, you don't need to worry about where your magnets are. And then what I always do is wipe off the bottom of your magnet because usually as you're peeling back the film that protects the, the glue, you don't want like stuff on here to fall onto your freshly clean bed. And then another thing that I do, and this is one of those things that you don't really have to do, but I always do this because I think it helps, um, get a fan, okay? I've got this stupid little battery powered fan I picked up for like $5, it's like rechargeable. Have a fan going next to where you're doing this because you know i have a dog dog shed like mental there's dog hair all over my house i don't want anything settling on the bed while i'm putting this down so by having a fan going it blows all the crud that may land like any dust bunnies or whatever on the bed blows them away okay what is the square footage of my shop space well this is my basement this is a room in my basement i have approximately if i remember correctly 
I have 10 feet by 11 feet or 11 feet by 10 feet. And then I've got a little closet and a little cutout. So maybe about a hundred square feet in here, if that. Hobbyist notes, $5, thank you, appreciate it for doggy treats. Uh, after I put the magnet down, I'll go see if the dog's out there, but I don't think so. I think he's still hiding by the uh, by the front door, which that's his mopey spot when uh, the wife's at work. So where is my spatula? I had a spatula for this that I normally use. I normally use a spatula, and I don't know where it is. Where is it? Uh, did I use it over here? I know I used it with the resin. Oh, that fell over. I don't know where it went. Oh well. I don't know where it went. I used to have like a little putty knife that I would use for these, but I can't find it. Oh well, small enough magnet, I'll just do it by hand. Fan go burr, yes. Well yeah, the, the doggo is the wife's dog. The dog was here before me. Somebody's going to freak out that I'm doing this with my thumb, but I've done a million beds and I've never had an issue with it. Breaks out the points card. Yeah, I've used, honestly, I used to use an old credit card for this. Um... But these small beds, you can, I, I've done them with my hands, no problem, for a while. Like, as long as you're consistent with laying it down, the beds, the, the magnets are so thick, they just kind of work. Like, it's hard to get a... If, as long as you lay it down properly, it's very rarely you'll get a bubble in here, because they're so thick. That it's it's almost impossible for like a bubble to work itself under if you're laying it down right. There we go. Uh, and the bald patch ain't coming in yet. That's good. Bit of heat. So normally what I do, um, and I, I do this on all my printers when. I do the bed, I'll put a bunch of weight on it for like a day um, and let everything settle. And then once the printer up and running, I'll actually heat the bed up to like 60 degrees and stack some weight on the bed itself. So that's what I'll end up doing with this. After we get the printer built up and everything wired up and functional, we'll do a test print or whatever, but I'll put some weight on the bed and heat it up and just let it sit for like, a, like six hours or so, just to make sure everything's kind of cured. Next sponsor, Keats. Hey man, if you know, it's my job now, so if somebody wants to uh, reach out from Keeps, sure, why not? So, this isn't mains, so what that means is I probably won't ground it. Um, there is a hole here or for grounding it, but this is only a 24 volt bed, so I'm probably not going to ground it. But if you do have a mains bed, make sure you do ground it. So what is zip tied to this? Or twist tied? What do we got here? What do we have here? I've got a JST connector. Oh, because you got to put the JST connector. Okay. When you go to put it through the drag chain, the JST connector won't fit. So they come with the, the JST connector separate. So we got bed thermistor, bed heater. We've got our thermal fuse pre-attached. So if this goes runaway, it'll turn off at 125. Um, you could put a ground on it. This isn't mains, so I'm not too concerned. Walk up into the jobby job. This is the jobby job. I'm giving the whole, the, the whole full-time YouTuber thing a, a, a try. See how it goes.
because you guys are so awesome and you're like, we want to watch more streams, but you work too much. And I'm like, fine, I'll be a full-time YouTuber. So uh, make sure you uh, you smash that like button. Yes, I said it properly because it's important. I think that's how it works for live. For live, because YouTube, I, I hate YouTube's live, because you have to pretty much be, it only you only go live to like people who follow you, really. Um, Matt R, $5, thank you, appreciate it. And Jason, morning Jason, happy Lunar New Year. Happy Lunar New Year, happy Year of the Tiger. Not mistaken. But yeah, like th this is YouTube. So we go we go to YouTube, right? Okay. So let's let's see this. Go incognito on YouTube. Okay. So we are incognito on YouTube, no account. Okay, so it's got no anything here. Hey Toby McGuire. So explore. So we've got how many people? We've got 325 people here live. So live. Okay, let's see what's live. So live now, we've got news. Where is like, we've got gaming, sports, that's it. Like I don't fall under gaming. Okay. Upcoming live streams, recent live streams, live now. Okay. So where would I be? Like, how would you find me if you weren't already subscribed to me? Like, that's the one thing that sucks with YouTube. Like you have YouTube gaming, but where is YouTube? Cause I, I go live under science and technology. So there's live sports, live gaming, live news, upcoming live streams. But where, where would you find me? If you just want to, hey, I want to watch live 3D printer guys on YouTube. Where the heck would you find me? Like, where would I be? I have no idea how YouTube Live like works for that. Explore. There's no science and tech. So yeah. Yeah, I have no idea how you would find me. Like if you're already subscribed to me, obviously, but I'm pretty sure like nobody here. There is a YouTube category on the start page if you are logged in. So explore. Can you name this printer Frankenstein? Nah, that's not how it works. I just subbed and you come up because I watch printing content. Well, that comes up on your homepage, I bet. Okay, but like if you want to like find live streams. So this is, I'm signed in now. So where do you see maker? Let's go back to incognito. You too. Okay, so if we search 3D printing, do I show up there? Well, there's Tom. 3D printing live. And yeah, these are all just videos. Joel. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know how YouTube like they're trying to go against Twitch. And I'll, I, I won't stream on Twitch because all my audience is here, right? So there's no point for me going to Twitch. But like, how are you supposed to find me if you're... It, it, you can't just go, hey, you know what? I want to watch live tech, guys. Nope. Yeah. These categories at the top here, though, when you're signed in, these are generated based on your views. So like, we hit live, well I'm Canada, so here's all the, the 
the freaking truckers all chilling in Ottawa blocking traffic. But like, still, I don't know. I don't know. It's the algorithm, baby. The algorithm. Arn, thank you for coming a member. Okay, so we got the bed trimmed up. And then what I do is we got to put some holes in this bed. We've got to make this a holy bed because we got to be able to put some screws through it. So the easiest way I found to do this that works nice and clean, put your bed on, you got to drill. Okay, I'm going to need a smaller drill. But you're going to drill some pilot holes. I don't actually, I've never played League of Legends. I've never watched a League of Legends stream. I don't know why it would show me that. Like, even on Twitch, there's, you know, I, I, there's, you know, I follow a few Twitch streamers. I'm subscribed to a bunch of people on Twitch. I don't watch any of them for the gaming. Like, I'll, I'll watch some people because of the person. I don't care what game they're playing or variety streamers. Like, so what you do is you drill through your, your magnet with the drill. So you drill through your, your hole, drill through the magnet. Don't push a lot. You don't want to accidentally pop the magnet off the bed. So just light force, drill through. Okay. Uh, let me trim that quick. Live tech guys in your area. Show me that Linus. Show me that WAN show. Okay. There we go. So that's trimmed. Oop, missed the spot. Okay. So we've got our three holes. Obviously, a screw isn't going to fit through that. Deburring tool. And you use your deburring tool to clean that hole up. And put a nice chamfer on it. And there you go. Now the advantage I found with the deburring tool versus cutting it out. Every time I try cutting it out, I either take off way more than I need to, and you still have like that janky edge a lot of the time where the plastic like or the magnet kind of like bends up. This, you get a nice chamfer. And it's pretty flat, it's still flat, so. Thoughts on Mandela Meg bed versus normal. I haven't used a Mandela bed, but I know a few people who do and they like them. So if you're okay with spending the little bit of extra coin, go ahead for it. go so now you have all your screw holes nice and clear magnets out of the way nice and flat good to go wipe it down countersink bit works wonder yeah if you have a countersink tool like a countersink bit that works too um, the problem is mine are all kind of worn out because I've tried it before mine are kind of worn out um, I don't have any new ones on hand and it, I find it kind of chews it up a bit, especially on these corner ones where they're so close to the edge. I found like I just take the whole corner out. Plus, I want to make it look kind of nice because this is going to somebody. So I'm not keeping this printer. So make sure you're subscribed if you want a chance to win it. Okay, so the heater is pre-attached. It's an LDO kit, thermal fuse. Here's your heater, your wires. So we got to put some M340s through it. The Ghost. Thank you for becoming a member. 335, M340, and then we use some M or er, and some M3 lock nuts. 
Uh, why don't I want to build an annex printer? Um, reasons. Simple as that. Founder of Annex used to be on the Voron design team. He is no longer on the team. There are things that aren't public, and I'm just not going to build one. Simple as that. So where is my... There it is. Yay, annoying lock nuts. Are these M6 or M7? Six mil. So that means I can use this guy? Nope, that won't work. Dang it. Create a Twitch account so you can give me Twitch Prime. <laughs> where's my Twi where's all my Twitch primers at? Twitch Prime in chat, guys. Twitch Prime in chat. Yeah, this kit has an MGN 9 for X axis. Do I have a favorite model? Um, I'm, I'm partial to the V2. I, li I like my V2. What do I think about the VZ, VZ bot gantry design? Um, it's cool. It's a, but the, in my case though, it's, it's like it's another Core XY. Like, it's Core XY. I've got a ton of Core XYs. I, I'm trying to build stuff that's not Core XY right now, like the the V Minion. Yeah, that coming build. Although I also have a, a V2 on the way, so I ain't getting away from Core XY that easy. And he plans on building a legacy. I would love to build a legacy at some point because that's the only Voron I do not have. Um, but nobody makes kits for it, so I would have to self source everything. And, uh, so it's kind of like on the back burner right now. It'll be a one day I'll build one. Um, but not this day. Screwing on M40s with lock nuts is tedious. Let's build a polar. Sure, find me a nice kit for one. Very likely have most. Um, I would need some. Actually, no, I, I don't. Well, I would need the frame, the bed, the frame, the bed, the uh, all the rods. I don't have any of the rods. I used a lot of the rods. I chopped up all the spare rods that I had um, from my V1 build, my V1.5 to build bonsai. So all those rods that I had sitting were chopped up. So I no longer have them. And then uh, what else? Electronics I have and screws I have. So yeah, only the expensive stuff I would need to buy. Okay, so there's one done. Did I say Charlie, welcome. Thank you for becoming a member. I don't know, I'll say it again. Charlie, thank you for becoming a member. Hang, me hang printer. I don't have room to work in this room, let alone print in this room. Or turn the room into a printer. An Epson printer. Aren't those those super expensive multicolor prints printers? I wish I had a smaller. Uh, I need to get a smaller wrench. Bed, frame, rods, at least it isn't. Um, yeah, true. What about a 2D printer? I have one upstairs, it's a brother. It's brother laser. Uh, know if somebody's working on documentation for the legacy since there are enough? Nope, I don't believe so. 
And that's kind of the thing with the legacy, okay? The joke with the legacy is it's a throwback to like the old Vorons. Um, so it, it's meant for those that have kind of, it's a, it's a, it's a resto mod. Okay. So it's not meant to be your first printer. It's kind of, Hey, I like the look of the old printers, but you know, like the old, like go back and look at like a V1.0 or V1.5. So it's meant for those that like that old school aesthetic or they want to upgrade like a V1.5 to a, a new one without dropping the rods. But, uh, it's a resto mod. So it's an old printer with new stuff kind of to make it a little bit nicer to use. But it's not meant to be a like fully documented, fully feature driven printer. It was just kind of like a fun little project RCF had. That was like his Christmas surprise a couple years back. So at the moment, nobody is working on documentation for it. You got the CAD. <laughs> uh, what do I think about the G5E bearing mod? Um, I haven't used it, but I think my... Uh, if Steve's in chat, does 2.4 R2 use it? I don't know. I'm using G5Es in... Uh, In the Trident, but that's stock, I believe. Steve is at work. Oh, Steve's at work. Okay. Look at Steve being responsible. What are the rest of you guys doing? Okay, 2.4 does not use it. Okay, so it doesn't use it. Um, here's the thing. Like, I don't have any issues with my Z on any of my current V2s with the stock setup. So, I'm very much a person where if it ain't broke, I don't, I don't mess with it usually. I just finished my AM8 build. Almost does it count as retro? <laughs> I lost my light, right leg to retire. Ooh, that's not good. Hank B, $5. Thank you. Appreciate it. I get paid to watch your stream. My employer doesn't know that, though. Oh, well, that works. I just quit my Microsoft journey. So you're going full time on your store there, Elector? They had Microsoft in Estonia? Well, I guess every country would have a Microsoft division. I'm going, I'm working from home, sick with the Rona. Oof, that sucks. I'm lucky, I'm, I haven't got it yet. Nobody in my direct family has gotten it yet. I've had a few, like, I think some, of, my wife's aunt got it. But, uh, a ton of people at work got it, but double-shotted. Got the booster, so I'm not too worried anymore. Regarding if it ain't broke, don't fix it. What's your opinion on backers for 2.4? Does your 2.4 have the issue where backers would benefit? If not, then it ain't broke. If you do have, you know, issues with uh, unable to get a good first layer because your gantry bows, then yeah, you might be worth getting those backers. But I don't run them on any of my machines. I don't, I don't, I haven't noticed the issue that causes or that would getting backers would resolve, so. Yes, now only shop Skype is part of Microsoft. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Well, congrats. That's the thing, eventually you get to that point with the side project where you either have to abandon the side project, not let it grow anymore, or go all in. That's like pretty much that, what happened with my YouTube. Um, the channel's going very good, mostly because of the live content, I believe, and you guys supporting me that much, because I would not be able to do this if it wasn't for you guys. And I, I got to that point where it's like, I, I felt I couldn't do anything more to the channel without spending like going all in. Like, I can't stream two, three days a week with my work schedule and family schedule and work a full-time job. Plus make videos, plus all the other stuff. So it's like, you know what? We'll see how going full-time YouTube works out. And I'm hoping it's the right decision, we'll see. Okay, so we got those on, which was super annoying. Lock nuts are down. So we put the springs in the bed and they got little cutouts for them. And we put the thingies in the bottom. So 
self-isolating due to a cough. That's like the crappy thing. Like, my kid is at daycare, and if he has any symptom, he has to isolate for, like, five days. Because he's under five, so he can't get any shots. So it's like, if he suddenly has a cold one morning, no daycare for five days. Joseph, five or $10. Thank you. Appreciate it. Just getting to work in Honolulu. Ooh, good morning. Good morning. Hope the YouTube works out for you. Keep up the good work. Thank you. I hope it does. Good morning. It's early there for you. I know that. How does this work? So that's got to go underneath, so. Yeah, so this goes underneath, over and out. Which brand rails? Uh, these are LDO rails, and then the MGN9 is, I don't know what brand, because the carriage had the brand on it, and it's covered now. But these are LDO rails, for the most part. The MGN9 rail, I'm not sure of, but it, it feels good. But pre-production kit, and there, I believe they are waiting on the rails, so that's what they're waiting on to finalize the kits to ship. So I believe, I don't know what the production kit will be, but I'm assuming good rails. I don't see why they wouldn't be. Robot dig? Okay, they're robot dig. The MGN9 is a, a robot dig rail. There you go. Oh, shoot. Dang it. There you go. Don't wrap your belt or your wires around the lead screw. You're not going to have a good time. goes down there. Let's put our nuts on. What's a non 3D printing hobby I have? Um, I have a house and I have a almost four year old toddler. I don't have hobbies. I watch YouTube videos in my free time. Um, I used to be into um, I used to shoot USPSA and IPSC and IDPA uh, before I got into 3D printing. So that was my uh, that was my hobby back in the day. So Lecter, I've got different nuts here. I've got like some flat knurled nuts and I got some bigger knurled nuts. Is there a preference for either? I'm going with the big ones for now. But. Matter of taste. Okay, so we'll put the big ones in for now and then play around with them. If we, if we feel like changing them, I can change them. Or whoever gets the kit can change them out. Okay, so. Zip ties. Where are my zip ties? I've got so many empty baggies now. Where are the zip ties? Where are the zip ties? Are they in this bag? I think they're in this bag. Or they were in the were they in the other bag? And did I put them somewhere? Oh, here they are. Big old bag of zip ties. Since the stream about the Trident, can't decide if I want to go self source or buy the kit. Um, modern preference, honestly, depends on where you are. A lot of the time, the kits are cheaper than self sourcing. Hardware wise, the Fizek kit and, you know, self or shameless shill, I do have affiliate links for it in the description of those videos. Um, other than them screwing up the panels, sending the wrong size panels, and forgetting to send a hot end, which they did correct, 
Um, the hardware in the kit is fine. Like, yeah, we had to do some stuff to the electrical and change a few things around. But the actual hardware of the kit is, you know, it's quiet. The fans are a little loud. The 60 millimeter fans are a little loud. But belts are good. Bearings are good. The motors are good. Seems to be okay. It's been printing for 24 hours straight right now. No issues, so. Is it better than like an LDO kit? Or no, it's not better than an LDO kit. But it's cheaper than an LDO kit. It's... Is it better than a Formbot kit? Uh, maybe. Is it better than a Blue Rolls kit? From what I understand, yes. <laughs> I've not heard a lot of good things about Blue Rolls kits. I've heard some people really like them, and then some people absolutely hate them, and they screw up parts, so. But it's like, when I do, you know, when I'm talking about SSRs, right? Here's the thing, I, I, I know how people are, okay? Because, you know, a lot of people are like that, and I'm like that a lot, but, it's like when I'm talking about SSRs and I'm like, buy an Omron SSR, buy a Crydom SSR, buy a really good legit brand SSR. But if you're gonna buy a cheap, shitty Chinese AliExpress SSR, this is the one you buy because people are cheap. People wanna save money. It's, you can talk about buying good quality components all day, but you should acknowledge that people will be cheap and buy cheap stuff and at least give them some advice in that regard. So they don't, you know, burn their house down. The last thing the team wants to see is somebody post a picture on the 3D printing subreddit or Discord of their house burnt down with the burnt remains of a Voron in there. Malcolm, thank you for becoming a member. Buy a Panasonic. I never used a Panasonic one. Just just buy a good one. That's that's the uh, that's the thing. Just just buy a good one. <laughs> uh, that's what I like to see. This Fizek stuff is pretty good. Fizek's hit and miss with quality on their hardware. I will say, they're uh, they have issues with their. Um, How many links am I taking off this again? I can't remember. So that goes there. Um, they're, they're electronics. They're electronics. Their boards have had QC issues over the years. That's what I've heard. Take off that many. One, two, three, four. I think it's four. Why don't I use the yellow ground cable? Uh, it's me. It's the bed is in high voltage. Like I could ground it. I think there is a ground cable in here. Yeah, I could ground it. I just normally don't ground. Yeah, which one is it? Yeah, it's this one, I think. Oh, shoot. Something went flying. What went flying? Hopefully that wasn't a wire that I'm going to need. Hopefully that was just a zip tie. But yeah, it's already tight in there with these wires. I'm not going to ground the bed. It's a, it's not mains. It's only 24 volt. Nobody grounds their hot end. So. Roof six. Mains bed, ground your mains beds. Always ground your mains beds. But 
non-mains bed, you, you don't really have to. Take a look, another I guess. Well, I've got like all these. <laughs> I think I've already shortened one. Oh! Ooh, fancy. You got the fancy one that opens in the back. Okay, let me take the links off these because I already got links installed. So take off six, you said. One, four, five, six. that off. Oh, that's not long enough. That is not long enough. Fancy I guess that open in the back. Fancy. I guess they just open in the back and you just kinda in your hole. Ah, I'm all greasy now. Hoping to see a Zodiac Revo nozzle. Well, I don't think E3D is going to be too kind to them with the patent right now, considering they already, uh, I think Zodiac was the one that already showed pictures of it without even contacting E3D, and E3D's like, um, nice to see you guys are, uh, just making stuff without the patent, because that is patented, but, you know, is what is, is. There we go, okay, snap in there. Okay, we're good, we're in. Because I know E3D, from what I understand, is very opening, open to licensing the design. But having, you know, their own version out before it's even public, yeah, that, it's, it might not go over well. <laughs> there we go. Okay. See, that's the problem. It's these stupid. There we go, okay. So we've got our drag chain in there. So when we come down, we're good. When we come up, we're good. Uh, now when it comes down, I am gonna have to pull these tight and like zip tie them underneath here because they keep wanting to pop out. Is there supposed to be a, a special way to keep these from popping out? Or is it just going to be I'm going to have to zip time at some point? Okay, whatever. I'll make it work. I'll, I'll zip time underneath once we're uh, at that point. Yeah, as long as they go, like, they do it the legit way. The the issue, like, and, and I know people are going to be like, oh, what about the slice stuff? The thing is, the slice patent is about four standoffs that have prior existing art.
that now nobody can use standoffs in a hot end design. Like that that part is what everyone has the issue with. It's not that they patented something, it's they patented something that a lot of people think they shouldn't have gotten the patent for in the first place. I, I can find designs on Thingiverse from like 2014 that use standoffs to prevent the hot end from rotating. Okay, so where are we at now? So we've got the bed on, we've got our uh, wire channels, we got that on, cable chain, bada bing, bada boom, end stops, and rear panel. Uh, do you know of any MPCNC? I haven't even built an MPCNC, so in terms of derivatives, I'm not sure. Um, I am building a little CNC on Friday, but it's like a little desktop CNC. It's, uh, here. Yeah, I'm building this guy. So Friday, we're putting this guy together. So it's the Comgro Robo CNC router. So we're gonna build that on Friday. Do some machining. And by machining, we're gonna scratch some materials. Okay, rear panel and end stop. So I need to get my end stop. Where are we at right now anyways? One o'clock. So we'll go to two. That's usually around the point my headphones die. And that's kind of like my streams over time. So I think it's already wired up, so I gotta find it in here. Y end stop. I think this is a Z end stop. There we go. So end stop is pre uh, assembled with this kit. And they're all the uh, FEP wire or Hifflefluora the dip -dip -dip wire, whatever kind that is. I have three MPC and C's. Dang. Will it do aluminum? That thing probably... It, here's the thing. A lot of times when it's like, can that desktop CNC do aluminum? A, a dripping faucet can carve the Grand Canyon if you give it enough time. <laughs> okay. So prepare to switch. End stops wired as normally closed. On micro switches, these are two normal blah, 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 blah. The soldering 250 millimeters of wire. Done that. Prepare the end stop for Z. So prepare the switch for Z by soldering the wires on. And if the switch has a lever, remove the lever. Okay, so to remove the lever on these is a super complicated process where you take um, your pliers and you grab the wire or the lever and you bend it back and forth and eventually it just kind of comes out. And there you go. You might break the little plastic housing, but that's okay. Now it... Because you just want the switch. It's more accurate with the switch. And by more accurate, I mean like fraction of a fraction of a percent more accurate. But it's your Z, so you want it as accurate as possible. Still clicks. Okay. <clears throat> so we're putting on a bunch of end stops. So we're putting the XY in right now. So let me get the other ones. So the X end stop goes in like that with the lever towards the front and it's one M2 self tapping. Where'd the music go? Oh, there we go. Just took its time getting to the next track. Heliflon. It's Heliflon wire. There you go. Uh, suggestions for a switch wire PI sheet. Fabrico, uh, Muller, uh, Fermio Labs has some if they do. Um, the LDO ones are pretty good. Um, yeah. Doing aluminum, doing aluminum well are different outcomes. Yes. The milk crate looks pretty cool. Um, I can't remember the guy's name on Twitter, but I've been kind of following that along for a bit, and that looks pretty cool. Okay, so for your X end stop, you only need one screw. There's like a little dimple here that the end stop sits on. So you only need one screw for it. So don't try and put two in.
And then again, it's screwing in the plastic, so don't over tighten it. And then at this point, I guess you could adjust your Z end stop position or your X end stop position. So you want it to click before you hit your, uh, your joint, your XY joint. And by the way, for the screws, um, I think these are M3, is it M3.5? I think it's M3.5. So if you want to know how much you need to adjust your screws, if the screw is M3.5, every full rotation of the screw is 0.5 millimeters. So if you want to bring your, you know, your X end stop over one millimeter, it's two full rotations of the screw spinning. So. Y end stop. That mounts on the side there, lever up. What's a good place to get a magnetic sheet? Um, it depends on where you are in the world. Go on the Voron Discord, and check the channels, uh, check the shop channels in the vendor section that are in your country. That's probably your best bet to start. Energetic is okay. There are better brands though. And Energetic is very hit and miss I found lately. Like I've had Energetic plates that have lasted a year and I've had some that are like DOA basically. Does Fermil have, you would have to check their site. I don't know. Let's get in there and tighten that. Okay. Right now, all my flex plates are Fabrico except for the LDO ones that came with the LDO kit and the uh, the Fizek one, which the only reason I'm using the Fizek one in here is because that's what came with the kit and I'm reviewing the kit. So I kind of need the, uh, I need to use it to review it. But at some point it will go bye-bye because why would I use a Fizek one when I got, you know, one of these fancy ones from Fabrico. Got my logo on it. Uh oh, I bumped the Ethernet wire. Hopefully, I didn't lose you guys there. Okay, so now we gotta put this one in. So the Z end stop, uh, it's gonna go like that. Switch down and make sure you make note of where the actual clicky part is. Do mass production of that. I didn't make them. Fabrico did. That's one thing. If, if I'm doing the full-time YouTube thing, I need a merch store. I'm slacking on that. I got to get a merch store up. I've got to get... I talk to a business person. I am not looking forward to doing my taxes this year. That's all I can say. Well, the problem is I would have to find a merch store that I could sell stuff. Because I could set up a... Like, technically, I have a merch store. If you go on my YouTube page, there is st there is a store. I do have some stuff. Um, but it's through YouTube, and it's just the logo. It's just, like, straight up... There, let me pull it up here. Like if, you, if you go to my YouTube page... Oh, my God, light mode. I don't know why it's light mode on this computer. Um store i i have a store but it, it's literally like auto generated stuff from youtube and like the prices are not the greatest like six dollars canadian for a sticker 
but I technically do have a store, but I need to get a proper merch store with some like custom merch, which I think I could do through stream elements has merch store support. So I might, I'm going to look into that, but I've got to get some proper art made up and whatnot. The Fabrica ones are awesome. I, that's what I'm using on like, this is Fabrico I've been using and I've been using Fabrico textured side on the V2 here. And then down on uh, Toasty, I've been using the flat side, the sticker side. And they're working great. Um, yeah, I like them. Okay, and M310s with two nuts, and that goes down there. And stop mounting. The M3 are dropped in from the top. Use M2 ball driver to fasten the screws. Position about two millimeters below the end of the extrusion. Okie dokie. Where are my nuts at? There's two right here. Hello from Belgium. Hello. Hello there. Wait, I had two nuts. Oh, there's the other nut. Do you have PI that wasn't working well? Um, usually when I have issues with PI, it's textured stuff. And when it comes to like the, um, like the non tech, like the stickers that don't work, if the sticker doesn't work, odds are it's like knockoff PI at that point. Drop the bed down a bit. Like a lot of the times they'll sell like, um, not PEI, they'll sell, what is it, PEC? Or P, not PEC, um, I can't remember what it's called. But it's it's not PEI. It's um, PEX, I think it is. And sometimes it's just polycarbonate. I've seen people just polycarbonate sheets trying to pass them as uh, PEI. Yes, Lector is Lector. Actually, before I forget, I'm going to put the uh, little Pex or Captain. Yeah. I, from what I understand, like, I think Wham Bam does it. They do Pex instead of PEI for a lot of their sheets. And I, I apparently it's better for PLA, but I don't print. I, I Most of my machines print ABS. Any, if it's enclosed, it's an ABS machine for me or other enclosed plastic. Really, in terms of PLA, my PLA machine is the switch wire, and then tall boy if I need to print something tall on PLA. But switch wire, that's what I've been using the uh, Urkfa for. Like, yeah, I've done a bunch of test prints in multicolor with the Enraged Rabbit Carrot Feeder, but lately I just keep six spools of filament up there of the common stuff, and then if I want to just print something in green, I just I just do it on the switch wire. That way I can do it all remote from upstairs. I know which colors are loaded. So I can just, I want to start a green print and I just go and print a green print without having to uh, change around, you know, come down here and change the spool out. So I just use it for laziness right now. That's what I'm using the Enraged Rabbit for. And it's great for that. So. Amazon affiliates. There's an issue with Amazon. Like I know Linus doesn't do it for a reason. I guess I think it's hard to get Amazon affiliate and get it to stick around or something like that. Uh, flip printer, line the preloaded nuts into position. It's easier so you don't have to fight gravity. Okay, so we're putting the back panel on now. So let me find that. Yeah, the Tim what? Huh? Ah, blah blah user what? Where do I live from? Oh, Canada. You can get Timmy's in the states. And let's be honest, it, you know, true Canadians hate Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons sucks. The only reason I have Tim Hortons is because it's the only 
I was on the way back from dropping the little guy off at daycare and it's like, I want a coffee. I prefer McDonald's coffee. Uh, TH3D, I don't know who makes his sheets, that's the thing. Like any store, here's the thing. Nobody really, there's only a few places that make PI sheets, right? So, most of them are contracting them out from other places, right? Like Energetic make their own, but they're Energetic. Uh, Fabrico is using, I don't know who Fabrico does. So, TH3D might carry good ones, but some other people might carry them too, because I, I doubt he's making his own type thing. So the trick is to find who carries good ones, or who sells ones from good manufacturers in your area. That's the trick. But if it works, it works. Like, Just make sure you're actually getting PI sheets and not random off-brand ones, because those are the worst. Buy a sheet, you go and put it on your bed. You have to put it on your spring shield or even like directly on the bed, because I've done that back in the V2 days before we had spring steel sheets common. I'd buy a, I bought one off Amazon because my, uh, which one was it? What's a good one in the States? Mo not Muller. Um, uh, what's the good one in the States? What's the good PI from the States? I can't remember. Somebody's going to remind me here. The one we used to buy from back in the day. CS Hyde, yeah. So I, 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 I bought a Gucci CS Hyde one. And uh, CS Hyde makes really good PI. And it died on me. And it's like, shoot, I need, a, I need a new one. And I was doing PIF at the time. So it's like, I need it now. So I just bought one off Amazon just to try it. And it claimed it was PI. It was not PI. But that was back in the day when you just took your PI and stuck it to your bed. So I had to remove the old PI from the bed. Remove the old glue, not screw up the magnet, so you couldn't soak it like you do now. Um, put a new sticker down, put a new PI down, and then it, it wouldn't print. I had to glue stick it, because it was that bad. Okay, so you can have Amazon affiliates, you just can't advertise it, I guess. I remember, I remember... Linus saying they lost it because of some reason. I, I didn't know what the reason was, but I guess if you're advertising it, that that's reason to lose it, I guess. I guess that makes sense. Lining up sheets, lining up magnets, lining up screws. These always suck. Pinch the screws. Hey, nothing lines up. Great. Oh, get back here. Okay, and then you. No, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Stupid screw. Alta stick. Um, Alta stick. I've heard is hit and miss. Uh, you do realize Mickey D's coffee? Yep, everyone's heard that story. Uh, the same factor as Wham Well, then there you go. If it's good, it's good. Have I tried FR4? Um, I have currently in Tallboy, not FR4, but I actually have uh, carbon fiber. I'm playing around with. I need to print some more. I've only done like two prints on it in like the month I've had it. But that's a carbon fiber spring steel sheet in there. Okay. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Main channel, 2.5 million subs. Damn! What do you do, DJ Natty? What is your main channel? M3 
36. Yeah, 2.5 million subs. I'm at 20... Am I at 28 now? How many subs am I at? I don't know. I, I make it a point not to check my numbers often. 28.2k. Okay, that's pretty good. You can DM me info if you want. Sure. I'm just curious. If you don't want to advertise it, that's fine. And free to give a shout out. I, I really, like... I have no problem giving people shout outs. Like... Even during the Fizek stream, I'm, I'm bet Fizek probably wouldn't like it, but during the Fizek stream, I'm like, yeah, LDO makes good shit. These guys make good shit. I have no problem if you make good shit giving shoutouts. Like, especially, like, startup stores. I, I like trying, you know... Poor DFH got slammed when I did the Urkfa build. But I have no problem... Especially startups and like small stores and whatnot, mom and pop shops, giving them shout outs to try and help them out. I have no problem doing that. Am I planning anything for 30k? Um, I haven't really done anything for any of my anniversaries. I do a tweet. I put a tweet out and go, hey, I, I'm at a number. Um, I need to do a room tour. People keep asking for a room tour. Um... Here's my room. <laughs> I need to clean it all up for that, though. Um, I need to do a room tour. I do a live QA every month with members. So if you are a member of the channel or a YouTube, or correction, a Patreon uh, supporter, every month, at the end of the month, last week, I do do a members-only live stream. Uh, just live QA and just, you know, chat. So I do do that, and then a month later it goes public, but I think 50,000 is like the number. So I should hit 50,000 this year, I'm hoping. Uh, what do I think of the Prusa XL? Well, they use a strain gauge. Um, here's the thing. I. I won't talk about things that, you know, the team is may or may not be working on because stuff changes all the time, right? Like, the development, uh, this is, that's like one of the reasons the Voron team uses Discord is because there's always chat going on and stuff changes so quick. So, stuff like the clicky probes, right? The clicky probes pretty much accomplish the same thing as what the Prusa does, where you're, you're probing the bed. Uh, the Prusa just does it with the nozzle. Marvin, thank you for becoming a member. And Hendrick, thank you for becoming a member. What would a, a Nero spec Warren look like? Completely stock. A complete stock Voron. That's Nero spec. But go funky with the colors. Yeah, strain gauges had issues. We did play around with strain gauges. Um, we even put the bet on strain gauges at one point. We had four strain... We literally... Like, I still have them. Let me see, yeah. Where are they at? Yeah, so if you want to talk about, like, the graveyard of Voron development, um, we had strain gauges under the bed at one point. Or no, those are fuses, I think. I don't know where my strain gauges are. We had strain gauges under the beds. We had FR FSRs under the bed at some point. Um, we had these little wonderful little 5-volt servos. We were going to try and make a deployable, like, BL touch that worked fine in the heat. Um, you name it, we've tried it over the years. Uh, worm drive for the Zed. We've tried all kinds of stuff over the years. There's a reason why we do closed development because people would like freak if they bought all the stuff that we buy and never use. Zarant. Five euro, thank you, appreciate it. Thanks for all the advice, keep up being awesome. Thank you. 
you keep on being awesome too. Um, the thing with Zed offset, here's the thing you get around it. You just do what we do where we have a, a micro switch that you ping the nozzle off to set your Zed zero every time. So you can have two independent systems and that way you don't have to rely on the system that you use to level your bed to also be your nozzle offset. Cause you could do anything to level your bed and then you just have a micro switch that doesn't drift to be your Zed offset set. So you just ping your nozzle off that and you're good to go. So. Yeah, worm drive. We did worm drive on the Zed. Um, it was enough that if you crashed your uh, nozzle into the bed, you would bend your gantry. And I'm talking like bend the extrusion. It had that much torque, but also had a lot of other issues. <laughs> Binding is a major issue. Oh yeah, we've played with all kinds of stuff over the years that never went public for good reason. So every now and then somebody comes up with an idea and it's like, oh, we've tried that. It does not work. And they're like, oh, but it's so good. It's like, no, no, trust me. Hey, the print head. Okay, we're building the print head now. What time is it? Should we, Should I carry on with the print head? Or should we... Uh, should we kind of call it there? Um, Lector, what is this little part? This is part of the... What is this part for? What is this for? I think it's part of the... It's part of the mod, and I don't know what it's for. Yeah, it's this part. Y bumper. Where does the Y bumper go? Need a list of things that didn't work. You wanna, well, okay, since, you know what? I, I don't wanna get started on the tool head and not finish it on the stream. We'll carry on with it Friday, but uh, here. Oh wait, what am I doing? I have the V0 manual open. I think it's the V01 manual though. Documentation. Or no. Printers. Where? Community GitHub. So I don't think the V0 has it. Yeah, the V01 manual doesn't have it. and explanation. Oh, that's a lot of work now. So let's see here. So V0, go back to V00. Oh, V0, manuals. Assembly manual. Okay. So just to give you an idea, so this is V0. So this is the original V0, okay? Not the V01 we're building right now. But uh, it basically... You get a hair in your mouth, you can't get it out. There we go. So, V00 is this guy. Okay, this is a V01, this is V00. Okay, so it's the original revision. Uh, the Z's different, a few tweaks to the XY motion, and it's Bowden only. But this is V00, okay? So, if you're curious how, like, it ended up like that. Let me find here. Here we go. So, the V0 development graveyard. So, like... This is me, by the way, that's my print there. So this is the original bed was all printed. Um, original design was like a U shape and then we did a T shape and then we tried a printed shape. Uh, original XY joints were like this was press fit bearings. Original front idlers were like that. That was the original tool head for it. Um, we tried a duct in the back. And again, this was all Bowden, right? So there was the original tool head for it. Um, Originally, it had printed tops here instead of extrusions. Um, there was the original jetpack back there. Uh, also, it was uh, rods at some point instead of lead screws and a lot more printed parts. Uh, original front idlers for testing for tensioning, AB originals. Like, you could see some of the heritage there. Uh, the Z had a lot of work to it. This was before. So, the reason for the Z is this set up here with this pancake motor and the lead screw did not exist before v0 we had to get companies to make it for this side for this size like you couldn't buy this you so at, originally we did a belted setup that was like the only way to get to fit and then i think we got um we contacted a few companies to make these so now that it's an integrated thing um yeah, originally it was all printed. Originally it only, like the original spec for this thing was four extrusions. 
Like you only had the vertical extrusions, everything else was printed. Because I remember, because the original design was four extrusions. So everyone bought four extrusions and then it changed to eight extrusions or, or 12 extrusions. So everyone bought, you know, eight more extrusions. And then it changed to like the 16 extrusions now or whatever it has. Um, so we have that tool head original. Originally it had this whole tackle box belted design. Yeah. Um, more bed design stuff, XY joints direct feed stuff, original top hat. So this was the like the original test print of the V0. Back when it had a 100 by 100 bed and there's the original tool head for it. Which you, or that's the uh, that's the V2 tool head, V2.2 tool head, but that's the original I think that is uh, I don't know which tool head that one is. But yeah, you can see this is like the original back when it had four extrusions. Yep, the 60 watt heaters. There's an original X axis. And then, yeah, KW10s, you can make little robots with them. This is back when it was all printed. Originally, this was a lot of printed parts. Also, it used like four millimeter belt for a while. Y axis bumper to reach the clicker. But I, I don't need it to reach the, oh, Y axis three. Oh, to reach the clicker. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Okay, I gotta put it on the extrusion then. Let me put that on the extrusion now before I forget. So I'm gonna M36. How long ago was this? This was about before Murph. So the original plan, um, the V0, we were originally gonna show it off at Midwest Rep Rap Fest 2020, okay? Y'all know what happened in 2020, okay? I don't need to remind you guys what happened in 2020. So obviously we did not show it off at Murph, but V0 was in development for roughly a year, almost over a year before that. So this would have been like December, 2018, January, 2019, that um, you would see those original designs. Thoughts on the kinematic mount from Mandela Rose? Uh, if you want to go that cool, go ahead. Like, I'm using a stock mount. I'm using stock mounts on all my printers for the beds, and I'm not having any issues. Hey, Tim, thank you for coming a member. What happened in 2020? I slept through it. Oh, just the world ending. You know how it be. Your, your average, you know, once in a lifetime for the third time global issue. Okay, so Y axis bumper. ending in the world's always ending thoughts on ender 3 to switch wire conversion if you want to go ahead i'm personally a fan of building from scratch a lot of the time but if you want to rebuild your ender personally if you have only one printer try and keep one printer at all times because one is done two is one when it comes to 3d printers because if something breaks and you don't have another printer, you're screwed. If you have two printers and you break one, you have another printer to fix it with. Can I put a hermit crab on a train? I don't know what a hermit crab is. So yeah, we're just gonna, we're gonna hang out for the rest of the 20 minutes of the stream. I'll clean up here. So uh, again, Friday, we'll do the Comgro build, the uh, Robo CNC, because again, nobody's home and I can make loud noises with the CNC in my basement. And then uh, Saturday night, we'll carry on with this guy. 
we'll build the tool head can bus solution from big oh those things are bulky I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of those removable tool head adapter plates like the wham bam mutant and the the hermit crab because that that how often are you removing your tool head like it just adds on that you you lose you're losing you know x y well depending on how you set it up x or y uh, build volume for i don't know not a huge fan Rune Rag Ragnet. Thank you for becoming a member. I don't think I have. Yeah, that's not on my. Oh, geez. I only have 10 gigs free on this computer. Jeez. I'm running out of room. This thing only has like a 120 gig hard drive. Like. How do I, how am I filling up this computer that quick? I have nothing on this computer. Like I just use this computer for streaming. Okay, my downloads folder is 30 gigs. That would explain it. Videos? Two gigs, okay, I got 30 gigs of downloads on this computer. And Fusion and a bunch, yeah, I guess you're, I guess you're right. Okay, let's put heat sets and stuff at least, get that out of the way. heat sets so i don't forget to do them next week thomas 10 euro thank you appreciate it hello from the still working class we're all working everyone's working everybody's working for the weekend windows update backups maybe Oh, headphones are dying. Yeah, that's how I know the stream ends. Uh, these AirPod Pros die at four hours. As soon as it hits four hours, they die. Okay, I need a heat set for that. A heat set for that. But I only just got here. Well, on YouTube, you can watch from the beginning. So watch from the beginning at like 20x speed and you might catch up by the end. Okay, so how many heat sets? So that's a heat set, that's a heat set. These need heat sets. So three. What else needs heat sets? So we're good there. So it's just the uh, heat sex on that. Okay. I had three out, so I guess I dropped one. One for that. And two, three, four. Uh, I guess we will provide parts with the heat sets installed. Oh, okay. If you want to go through all that trouble. <laughs> That's honestly, I, I like the heat sets as a, um, what I tell people is when they're building for the first time, go through the manual and read the entire manual and prep your parts at the same time. So go through the manual, put all your heat set in as you go this familiarizes you with the manual itself, so you don't accidentally forget anything. And you put all your heat sets in, so you don't have to do it during the build. That way you don't have a hot iron sitting around, or conversely, you're not always plugging in an iron and then removing it. So you get familiar with the parts, you get your heat sets out of the way, and you read through the manual once before building. Now these little standoffs here, um, these are like spacers. Make sure when you put the heat sets in, don't squish them in too much because you'll deform everything. So just 
Put them in under light heat and light pressure. It's very easy to deform them because they're very thin walled. And then be careful when you put the other one in that you don't burn yourself on the first one you put in. tuning might be a great video to make i hear you talk about it often on stream um there's a lot of good guides elliot is it or not elliot um ah who is it on the voron discord has a really good one ellis ellis has a pretty good tuning guide problem is tuning is like very printer dependent right some printers print really good out of the box some you gotta spend like could be days tuning it really depends um What's a good temp for the inserts? Whatever the melting point of your plastic is, a little bit above that, I usually go. Mine's broken, so I don't know what temperature it's at right now. It's whatever temperature it's at. Um, but basically, you want to melt the plastic. You don't want to cook the plastic. So if it's like, oh, there's that other one. Um, if it's ABS, like 260 would do it. How about finally getting dock on stream? Oh, maybe in the future, now that I'm got time. Thank you for becoming a member. I have the expensive heat set inserts from Ruthax, but they are not the adjustable height. You know, for where Jason gets them from. Adjustable height heat set? What? If I don't remember you're wrong using Super Slicer. Yeah, I use Super Slicer. Matthew, thank you for becoming a member. Is Doc the Dodge? No, Doc is not the Dodge. Let me see if the dog's outside. He's probably still hiding upstairs, though. He didn't come downstairs once. Normally I hear him at the door. Nope. Coffee's gone. Oh, the tool. Yeah, the tool is adjustable. So for those that don't know, the, the LDO one, the one that comes with the LDO kits um, and this kit, it's got two little, uh, it's basically the end is threaded for a bit and you've got two heat sets on it. And what you do is you basically adjust them so that they lock together. So when you screw them both together, they like lock up so they don't move. And you set it so that the depth is uh, as deep as the heat set itself is long. So that way when you're putting the heat set in, you don't melt beyond the length of the heat set. Because a lot of tools, they just have like one length. So they're either too short and you can't put them in, it's harder to put them in straight, or they're too long and you're melting below the heat set. So if you're putting into a blind hole, you get all kinds of melted plastic up in the heat set, it's not good. Shake the snacks. I'll try. He normally doesn't get treats, so he's not. He doesn't know what the bag sound is. Go to want a treat? Let's see. Here, doggy, 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 doggy. Coda. I don't hear him. <laughs> Coda, want a treat? Eh, we'll see. He might show up. He might show up. Doggo denied. Doggo denied. How's this coming along? 86% done. 
Look at all them rat rig parts. Full plate of yellow rat rig parts for a minion. Because it's a minion, so we gotta do it in yellow, I guess. People wanted yellow. Although I do gotta print some blue parts. So, like, minion. Oh, and there go the headphones. And there goes your music. So, I'm gonna end the stream there, guys. Um, for all those who hung out, hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you learned something. We got this to the point. We'll do the tool head next, and then on to electronics, pretty much. So, Friday night, uh, we'll carry on with the build. Um, Saturday, and then, or correction, sorry. Saturday, we'll carry on with this build. Friday, uh, early afternoon, we're gonna do the CNC build. It's just a little desktop CNC. We'll get that built up, do a few test cuts and play around, and just, a, just an afternoon hangout on a Friday. Um, we'll carry this on Saturday. If we need to finish it up, we'll finish it up Tuesday. Um, my V Minion kit has shipped. That will be whatever shows up first, the Micron or V Minion. I think both are in the mail and both are on the way. Something was supposed to be delivered today. Let me go check. Okay, something was delivered, but I don't know what it is, but it's from, I think it's from LDO. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Panels? Are they panels? Did LDO just ship me random panels? <laughs> okay, they're panels. So I'm assuming this is part of uh, a kit. Because LDO is sending me a, yeah, these are panels. Why did I get panels? Why did LDO send me panels? Why did you send me panels, LDO? Jason, are you here? Why did you send me panels? <laughs> yeah, these are panels. Okay, well, I have panels here. Um, Jason, <laughs> it's for the, I'm assuming it's for the V2, because they're square, and they're all the same size. Yeah, they're too small for this. They're too small for the Trident. So these are probably for the V2. Yeah, these are for the V2. I don't know where the rest of the printer is, but that's also on the way. So we've got a V Minion, uh, a Micron, and a V2 on the way. Um, one of the box. Okay, I got one of the boxes. So the V2, I'm gonna save. Whatever shows up first, the Minion or the Micron will be the first build. And then whatever one shows up second will be the second build. And then we'll do the V2. So that's the current plan. Two packages. Okay. So I guess they just sent one. Um, I got a, a voicemail. Who called me? Who called me? I got a voicemail. Who is that from? Recents. Oh, DHL called. Okay. I probably owe them money for some reason. But anyways, we're going to call the stream there. Um, four hours, that's usually what it is. We'll carry on with this build Saturday night. Friday, we are doing the little CNC. More streams in the future because it's my job. And you guys are awesome. For those that donated, you're awesome. For anyone who watched the stream, you're awesome. For anyone who became a member, you're awesome. You're all awesome. Enjoy the rest of your week. Be safe out there. Wash your hands. Cheers.
Namaste.